On this week's episode of Friend Code, Nintendo drops a direct for Super Mario Maker 2! Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Friend Code. I'm your host, Michael Damiani, and it is my privilege and my honor to introduce a very special guest who's joining us this week, Don Casanova. Hello everybody, happy to be here. Don, yes. is this your first podcast debut? Wait a second. This is a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no! I failed. Uh, officially, I guess, yes. I think so. Okay. Yeah. He's one. had uh, brief anecdotes yeah. about his, his adventures on the Easy Allies podcast. Ooh. But yeah, yeah. I've only a, appeared briefly. It. Usually not in anything Very more than cameos. 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. I bail, so we'll see how long I stick around. Uh, for our listeners, that other voice you heard was Daniel Bloodworth. All right. We are here late. It is like 8 p.m. our time. Um, what happened today is Nintendo did drop a new Direct for Super Mario Maker 2 at 3 p.m. our time. And we were talking about it yesterday when it was announced, and we were like, we, we have to get Don to be a part of this. But with, uh, with your responsibilities and your work at, uh, at Funhouse, we couldn't do it at 3 o'clock. So we did the daring act of <laughs> avoiding spoilers for yeah. three hours, <laughs> turning off like all social media and stuff, staying off all the internet. All internet, yeah. The world could have ended. I wouldn't have known. <laughs> yeah. no, I was like, like, oh, maybe Major it's development, yeah. and like, we would, turn, we would turn in at 6 p.m. chats like, did you see this yeah, happen? Yeah. Like, wait, what? Well, I was, I was doing a lot of stuff. I, I definitely needed to be connected at the time, but I was like, I was dancing. <laughs> I was like, every once in a while, I would like, click on that like tweet deck tab, and I would see just like a whole bunch of gifts. I'm like, nope, no, yeah. next tab, next tab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was certain I would see a thumbnail, but nothing happened. But it was preserved. Yeah. We made it to 6 o'clock. We did our, our live reactions at that point. And now, uh, after we've collected our thoughts, we're going to sit down and uh, we're going to talk about Super Mario Maker 2. Um, and that's, yeah, that's a, so this is actually the 50th episode of Friend Code. Nice. So I wanted to do something special. Wow. And I got Dawn that's on here. Incredible. Yes. Wow. I know in that's the so past, cool. like, I tried and stuff, but... This is the one that made it happen. Uh, real quick, before we get into the, to Super Mario Maker 2, I just want to say that uh, I did originally envision having a, a new logo and updated graphics for Friend Code by this episode. Oh, okay. Um, but we're just so close to E3, and I already have the people working on other graphics for their yeah, stuff, yeah. that it wasn't a priority. It, it doesn't need to be a priority right now, but at some point after E3, uh, I will try and make that happen. I'll try and get an updated logo at the very least. Um, but I, I did want to, I was like, maybe the 50th episode would be a good time, but sometimes you just got to do it when it actually works out for the best. But yeah, we got, the, I got Don here and we're going to talk about Super Mario Maker 2. Pumped. It's time. I'm excited. And, uh, yes, as you stated, in the long tradition of Nintendo, shadow dropping directs with like a day's notice. Yeah. Just the, the trend. <laughs> yeah, keeps... it's not quite a shadow drop, but it's a day's notice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like it's as close to it as possible. It's like, mm, what's the minimum lead time we can give people? <laughs> and it's like, there you go. It's like, ah. Uh -huh. I just thought it's kind of funny to me too because we also did the same thing, <laughs> like when put, putting yeah. out a retrospective this week with 36 hours notice. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, it's cool. That's actually cool to be able to keep a secret for that long. Yeah, <laughs> see, it pays off sometimes. That's why you don't want to like spoil stuff sometimes yeah. when you know about it. This was a meaty 15 minute video. Yes, deep dive Jam into packed. it. A lot of stuff. Um, I'll get this out of the way because everyone, people who watched the show for the last few weeks. There was no switch light. No, there was nothing about it. Absolutely, it was just Mario Maker two. That's all it was. That's it. And I'd be lying if I didn't say that I had a small bit of my mind was hoping that they would have, not necessarily a Switch Lite, but I did think like maybe they're okay. going to do like the yellow, the Mario Maker yellow special version nice. of right. the Switch as a bundle oh, or something maybe. That kind um, of thing. It still could come. Who knows? Yeah, maybe, the but it, it's a little. Or the Joy-Cons. Joy I thought maybe they do yeah. the yellow construction Joy-Cons. Um, that still, could still come. It still could. I yeah. guess it could. It just, I would feel like this was the time to say it if they're going to say it. I wish they would have because I'm yeah. just riding the fence on those neon yellow ones, man, trying not to succumb to buying them, but I need new choices. Well, maybe accessories too. don't need to be coordinated right like don't even announce it yet. Like at E3, sure. they announce them at E3 or even yeah. the, the Invitational. It's like, hey, here's like 
something the invitational else. Invitational will yeah. have something. Yep, yeah, you're right. Very we'll we'll so get cool. to the invitational. And, uh, at the, end, the 28th is the date, right? Yes. So that's three weeks ahead. Yeah, there's still they have a, a little. Good, there's still time. possibility. Yeah, it's a possible dawn. Oh yes. But uh, yeah, I've been waiting for this dawn, and they they they, they got right into it. And uh, Nintendo was actually nice enough to send us an email that kind of like listed out everything that was talked about. Um, or went further into depth about things mentioned in the 15-minute video. Mm -hmm. And uh, they start off with, like, what's new. Um, and uh, basically, I want to start, Don, before I get into any specifics, I want to know, like, how you felt after you saw this video. Like, what is your hype level for Super Mario Maker 2? It was, It is quite high, quite high. It already was high, right? But, yeah, now it's, I mean, it's over the top. And although they definitely didn't reveal everything that I was kind of hoping would be included in this one, and maybe some of that they still can, and maybe some of that won't make it in. But, um, I mean, it has more than enough to, like, satisfy my pre-order. Yeah, I'm going to pre-order, you know, and they have anything like that. So don't tell uh, Bossman, but... Um, I'm extremely excited for it. It looks l just about. I've mean, still got a few few questions, but okay. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind it's one of the most highly anticipated games of the year for me, for sure. Nice. Yes. I see you. Uh, you took some notes uh, after we finished watching. Yes. Um, for the presentation, um, I've got the notes from the email, mm -hmm. but I feel like you are you and Ian are the resident Mario Maker. Experts at Easy yes. Allies. I mean, Kyle's, Kyle, quite, yeah. Kyle's quite. Kyle's in I want to put Kyle below there. you too. Kyle. Kyle's like right below you too. I get to do this. <laughs> yeah, he's an there's, there's Don, Don, and Ian, and then there's Kyle Bossman tier. So like we have S tier, Ian and Don, and then A tier, Kyle Bossman. Where's that? Where's that? Where's that image right now? I want to do this. <laughs> Didn't Brandon review the first one? Uh, I think maybe, yeah, probably. All right, yeah. so Brandon's also up there in A, <laughs> A, A tier as well with Kyle Bossman. Everyone's dabbling a little. <laughs> Everyone's Everyone dabbling. else is below that. Yeah. <laughs> It'll become a ranking episode. Uh, but, yeah, like you've got some talking points. I want, I want to give you the opportunity to talk about the things that you liked, um, mm. and anything, uh, things you didn't like. You, you said there's some things you didn't see as well. Yeah, wh where do you want to start, Don, actually? Sure. I mean, I, well, I have – I broke – I have so many notes, but I have some – basically, I have my notes broken up into like – some things we haven't seen either revealed or defined yet or I'd like to see. And then also my notes regarding what, you know, some of the things they revealed uh, that we do know now that are confirmed. So, okay. uh, I mean, where do you want to start? Do you want to go down one or the other? Well, uh, the we first part of the email was about, like, the new the new uh, features. Like, they talked about, like, the slopes, angry sun, on, off, switch. Yes. Water level was the first moment when we were watching it where yeah. you were like, yes, yes, about that. Yeah. Like, wh why water level? Like, why did I get you excited? I was extremely excited for that reveal because that was one of the things I've been wanting since the very first release where you have a, not an, a completely underwater level, which was already available, but one where you have a water level you can assign the depth mm. and it's essentially a level that you can split up so you can have a whole area where you're traversing terrain even going up mountains into the sky area but then you can also plunge into the water and go down deep you know uh, this is shown a lot of times in the caribbean sort of themed levels or even back in uh super mario world with the dolphins you know and yeah. all that so there's oh, yeah. i just have a lot of fun like to me a lot those levels very often all throughout the mario franchise have been some of the just raw fun levels and so I've always wanted to be able to design some uh, with that feature available and this is really cool too because they revealed you know that I mean not just you can set the water level but you can set it to rise or fall yes. you can even set the speed at which it rises and falls yeah and so and 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 you can uh, replace water with lava if you want as well so I mean whole bunch of options. It was really nice to get to see the actual interface mm -hmm. of how it's going to work. Yeah. Because they alluded to in the previous video that there's going to be stuff like that, even like moving levels, the airships and stuff like that. Yes. How would we actually do that in the in the design uh HUD mm. and they showed like that it was really simple. It looked really simple. I don't know if you thought it would look simple, but yeah, like the arrows, like click it once to like go speed two, click yep. it three. It's like one arrow, two arrows, three arrows, or something yep. like that, or color coded. And yeah, it looked very simple and like easy to discern. Super simple. And a similar thing, which they also uh, expanded on to kind of show you exactly how it works, is um, 
with the uh, custom auto scroll feature, which they showed very mm-hmm. er, very quickly before with the little bird icon, yes. and you're sort of so you're assigning sort of how the camera and how the level scrolls automatically. But in this one, they actually showed that you sort of use these little numbered bird icons to set sort of waypoints wherever you want, and then you can set different speeds between those waypoints. You know, so it's really kind of cool. A super simple, super just user friendly. It makes instant sense, and um, that cleared it up because because that was one of the shots in the original gameplay trailer they showed that I had a lot of questions about when they just showed the vertical yeah. line being raised by the bird, and I was like, what exactly yeah. is happening there? You know, so this was cool to show them do like one. One, two, three, you know, multiple birds in a row. Just drag them to where you want it. Set the speed in between. It's awesome. Yeah. Though, yeah. I, just thinking about it really quick, I'm curious. They showed, obviously, how it worked and stuff. I don't think they showed a way to go, like, scroll left, did they? Everything was, like, scrolling to the right and up and down. To the right and up and because down, yeah. when they were showing off the example of how it's going to work, like, oh, you can, like, make it go slow. And then, like, horizontally, like, it goes, it speeds up right now. And then it started to go down. I was like... Did someone recreate that Smash Brothers stage, the the, oh. the Cruiser Rainbow stage, oh, or whatever? Oh, yeah. Like and like, Dude. literally, like, cause you, like yeah, like you can make it go up, go right, go down, and then can you make it come back left? And you can make it like an objective based level because that's a new thing they talked yes. about as well. Very excited like, I'm, about I, this that. This is the t- yeah, like I loved how this was jogging my like I like my brain and think of these cool ideas. Yes, and yeah, like it just even something as simple as that got me really excited. The objective-based thing. Should we talk about it for a second? How awesome that oh, is? Oh, yeah, open the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you feel about this it? This yeah. is amazing because when I looked back, after we watched it, I went was back. Was there, like, no other uh, options for that? There was always a goalpost in the first game? Uh, right. And, you know, there were, like, multiple ways to get there. You could manipulate it a certain amount with keys and this and that, or objects. You could, you know, you could, depending how you designed your level, you could make it so that, like, oh, you have to be big in order to wear the you know the spiky hard hat in order to progress you you make it in order you could kind of manipulate the assets to force someone into it but you couldn't just state this is the yeah. completion uh requirements and um they turn out to be like really uh um a lot of options. It looks like yeah. you can just choose, like, do they need to kill a certain amount of enemies? What type of enemies? Do they need to have a certain power-up? It looked like you could almost choose any object in the game and a number related to that object and then assign how they need mm. to, you know, either have those or, you know, power-ups in order to uh, complete the stage. So that opens up, like, so Is many Is there anything options. in there that, like, that you could tell where... You know, say, like, you have to get Yoshi to the end of the stage, like... I would assume that would be, like, an exact thing, right. Yeah. Like, I didn't see it in the particular menu, but I would think that would definitely be something, which I love. I love that. <laughs> yeah, that interface, again, talk about how well designed the interface looked. Yeah. It, uh, again, yeah, choosing the conditions, it was just, like, little icons, with like, yeah. a, like a nice clear image and then text that said, this is your objective, and it was just, like, apply it to the stage. Right. And they have it, the numbers highlighted yes. in a color and everything just instantly. I have to sense. imagine, Don, because what you were just talking about, Bloodworth, even if it's not possible, I have to imagine Nintendo will like monitor feedback mm. and yeah. potentially up do updates to the game where they had like patches where like next patch, oh, we saw a lot of user demand for this condition. Mm. Bring Yoshi to the end of the level alive or whatever. Yeah. And he can't pass through a gate. We're now adding that in. Like there's so many possibilities for that, you know. Absolutely, yeah. But it's such a good thing. Because we were, I, yeah, that was one of the questions I wondered about: is how are they actually implement that? Like, how are you going to say? Is it just be click a hundred coins? Do you have to like click the coin? Uh, they yeah, s- so simple. No, it makes it exactly same thing. I, I I assumed if they did include something like that, that it would be like give you way less. Like you'd be able to just select a few preset yeah. conditions. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, to see that they really open it up, it looks like, and really let you set a wide number of conditions and multiple conditions. I think there was at least three different uh i mm. could be wrong but it looked like there are at least three different parameters you could set up to if you want so i mean yeah that's gonna make it like gosh you can really design a lot of fun you know because i used to kind of some of the levels i'd mess around with were almost like you know silly sort of rpg and that you'd have to get this item in order to be able to get this item in order to be able to get here and stuff like that you know and then uh to have this extra layer then for how to actually complete the stage is wonderful because it doesn't tie you to that thing of like you know, you have to, they have to be big in this part of the level in order to get that. Like, they could buy, maybe there's another way they can get through there, but yeah. no, they can't beat the level. They're going to have to figure out a way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, I wonder if there will be, like, you can apply a condition to completing, like, an objective you have to complete to complete a segment of a level. 
Mm. Like, oh, you, yeah. like say like in this part to advance this part, you got to collect the hundred right. coins. Oh. And let's say kind make, of like in a Zelda game where you have to kill all the enemies in a room to open a door. Yes. But what if they can make conditionals on that dawn? Where yeah. if if you get a hundred coins, this path will open. Mm -hmm. But after X amount of time, if the player doesn't do that, a, a second path opens, and each of those go to a different oh, area. God, that would be like, so cool. Do you think it, it could ever get that in depth, or or would you ever want to see it get that in depth? I would love it if they did. I don't know if that level of, uh, of complexity will be included in this, but again, because you can basically, you know, find workarounds to a lot of that kind of stuff, by oh, them yeah. adding this, it kind of gives you the option of now you can focus on the actual part of the level to design, you know, how you want to um, force people into certain kind of parameters, I guess, achieving certain parameters. But, you know, where they have the warp block, it's like, who knows, they could assign yeah. something of like, that's not active until, you know, so you could assign something has to be uh, collected or achieved before that warp block becomes comes active, etc. Who knows? Yeah, they also talked about a new thing that could potentially be used as a workaround for potential bra branching paths or objectives: the on-off blocks. Yes. Or switches. Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they showed those off. Those um, are awesome. You could use them to make challenging platforming puzzles. Yep. But obviously, people are probably can use them to be make elaborate like cerebral puzzles where yes. it's like uh, how do I actually advance through here right. yeah. and, uh, well, I thought it was yeah. interesting I don't remember if it was a shell or what but they had something oh, where like yes. there's a shell going back that and was forth it. And, like, to hitting hit the, the, the coin yeah. Yeah, yeah like the objective was to hit a red coin down there but yeah. that, like, that could be your objective like right. collect eight red coins and you gotta find the rooms and that room's like how do I get that coin and you got you gotta hit the blocks and, and, and yeah. you, could, you could put multiple layers of things uh, what was the one little creature that he copies like they're showing when you jump he jumps Oh, oh squibble or squeak yeah. Squeak. Yeah, I was, squeak. It, it was a weird uh, name. Yeah. It was only in a Super Mario 3D world. But I mean, section. imagine, because you can it, then use combinations of like using those on off blocks with a shell or whatever object and by placing those creatures. So you have mm -hmm. to do a really complex thing of, you know, you have to both be activating oh, the red and blue switches, dawn, yes. but you also have to jump at the right <laughs> time to make the little <laughs> creature. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It could be like so didn't cool. They put them in the email. Um, yeah. So gosh, yeah. And and they had a lot of that kind of like thing, a lot of switch type stuff where you can, you can reverse the direction of conveyor belts. Um, if you have the track w that you're riding on, you can switch it to change it to a different path on the track. A different like velocity. Uh, yeah. Yeah, too, and yeah. things like that. So all that kind of stuff uh, really opens up the possibilities of what you can do. It's just so, man, it's really cool. One of the other moments I saw, Don, mm. I hope it's on this list of yours. Um, you got really excited when they finally dove into co-op. So yes. there's a co-op making. Yes. Using a passage Joy-Con controller to a friend and create a course together side by side. It's local only. Yeah. You did have some thoughts on that, but yeah, you were really hoping for yeah. some, co some kind of co-op option. I, I mean, we knew there would be a co-op option, right? Right. Because it was just with the whole uh, Mario and Luigi together and the marketing and all that. But um, we didn't actually know. actually that fun little uh, intro. When they started, yeah, the yeah, thing, like yeah. You were getting right really away. Yeah, right when I saw done. that, I yeah. said, "Okay, so this is going to be." So uh, it, when it had started that way, I actually thought there was going to be an even bigger focus on that part of the game. But they mentioned it, but they did clarify that locally, at least, you can both be on the same screen, placing assets. And I assume they didn't show it, but I assume when you test it, maybe only one of you gets tested. I'm not sure exactly how that'll work, but um. But uh, I certainly am really hopeful that they'll open that up online as well, though, so that, you know, I could be working on part of the level at my place while Ian is working on the same level at his place. You can share it with your friends that way. Uh, because not only not only would it be cool because then you don't have to be in the exact same space to be both designing a level and contributing to it at different times or the same yeah. time, but also what that would open up, which I think is really cool, is, um, you know, you can copy and paste whole sections of your map you create, right? So let's say I want to create just some complicated little mechanism or some, you know, thing that works a certain kind of way. I mean, if then you could share that with your friends in that way, essentially, by them copying and pasting the assets, you know, by them having access yeah. on the servers. I don't yeah. see why that isn't possible. So they haven't quite described that yet. Maybe it'll only be a local feature, but I don't see why that wouldn't be opened up to uh, yeah, they have, online co-op. They have, obviously, they have the cloud save system yeah. in place for some of their games. There might be a way where 
like you finish editing it and you you're done for the day. You save it without publishing. And you save it to the cloud or whatever. Yes. It's not published, but you can uh, authorize other friends on your friend list to yes. have access to that file. So if you and Ian were on your friends list together, yeah. it, you, I don't think you both could work on it at the same time. Which would be fine. I think, it would yeah. be like once you're done, like, hey, I'm like I'm going to bed. And Ian's like, I'm going to yeah. be up for a few more hours. And you're like, okay, cool. You can keep working on it. <laughs> yeah. And when you come back next day, you see like – Super see, Mario Maker yeah. Google Docs. Yeah, right essentially. Now. It's a, it's a <laughs> yeah, Google no, Docs. it'd be yeah. super like, cool. And then you'd like track changes and like delete. That's what you to say. Delete yeah. this part and delete that line. Or, <laughs> dude, imagine because you know how you could, I mean, there's the sub levels, they call them, whatever. You know, you have multiple canvases you're yeah. working on, you connect them with the pipes. Imagine yeah. if one of you could just be like, you know, working on one of the canvases sure. while the other one's working on the other canvas, and then you're going to connect them, you know what I mean? Because they're part of the same stage. Um, yeah. It would be so cool, dude. They also a new thing they showed that could also tie it into the, how the system could work well. Uh, the comment system, that's more for feedback of like reactions from players playing a level. But what if they also implemented that in the creation thing? So when you came back to see the progress, oh, but it was making yes, tracking dude. updates. But maybe there's a Leave problematic a part notes, uh... instead of you you having to like get together on voice and talking about it. They just leave a marker and have the comment. This is the spot I'm talking about. Dude, it needs yeah. like we gotta so like cool. jump. No one can make this jump. We gotta tweak it a little not bit. only that but you know you could like draw them little schematics if you want or like you know what i mean little like notes like that with your stylus it'd be so cool it is cool to see the comment system come back though yeah, yeah. so yeah. that that is com- actually is coming back uh in a form of like a, a repurposed meverse style system essentially yeah. where users can comment you know leave like draw pictures tag tag things yeah. as well uh for what they think the course type is to help with the uh, the search functionality of that as well, yeah. Like, uh, how do you feel like the, the the comment system? Like, do you feel like you know that's enough for in terms of helping discoverability and getting user feedback on your levels? Like, are are you happy with what you saw in regards to that? Definitely, yeah. I was really happy because it, it looked very similar, like you said, to how it was before, which worked fairly well. They had, a, I think, they could have streamlined it a little because I remember there was always it was always a little cumbersome with. Um, the the w- there was two ways to like view profiles and there was two ways to view people's levels I remember depending if you're on the meters. yeah I, I actually do remember the it's, like trying to find somebody's specific levels was a little yeah, weird it was yeah. like they kind of split your profile and your levels into you could access them in two different places and leave comments so I think if that is streamlined but essentially the same thing as it was before it'd be wonderful because it worked pretty well one thing I was thinking well you know you're talking about like leaving sp- notes on specific mm-hmm. parts of level I think you could uh, least if they allow you to upload screenshots because you know you can like really easily take a screenshot on the switch then that might work to where like oh yeah you can like upload a screenshot and then draw on yeah. it put your notes on top of the screenshot because i know before with the comments um you know you could always draw a picture if you wanted and this and I, that's what i'd always do when i play other people's levels i would almost never write a comment i'd like draw them a little picture and then I, okay. you, you know they have the stamps you could use the stamps yeah. to make them a little oh, picture the so i'll so just make them like a little artwork you know what i mean <laughs> <and stuff. laughs> so but um uh what was i actually there was something related to that i thought of go ahead if it i know in time mind. there was that whole the scroll stopping thing that they talked about i remember you being excited about that yeah, that's really cool. They have this new feature where you can essentially, it sounds like you can draw like a vertical or horizontal line, which establishes where you want the camera to stop. So sometimes, you know, a lot of times when you go into an underground little subchamber and they're with coins or whatever, how suddenly the camera's fixed and it won't scroll left yep. or right, even though you move, it'll just, you won't be able to see beyond the walls. So that's a great way for controlling, you know, perspective so that you can have hidden areas and all this, um, you know, a little more control over the camera. It never hurt. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. The uh, f- the point before that you were making, you were talking about like uh, the different ways that people would find your levels, but maybe your profile yeah. or stages. But I'm pretty sure they're wrapping it all into one this time yeah. because they're doing the the maker point system where players rate your levels. You have like a it's your reputation basically, mm. and you get points. Yeah. And you unlock it's essentially achievements. I think. Yeah, and you unlock. Sure. I'm, I'm really curious, like what constitutes like what all conditions there are to unlock things. You know, it's like. Do you have to play certain modes? Do you yeah. get, you know, for just like completing so many levels? Are there specific, you know, like we were talking about those objectives, like 
do you have to go through like 10 auto scrolling levels、mm. in order to get a certain costume, or you know, 15 puzzle levels to get some other costume? You know, and co- hopefully those costumes make sense,、mm. or like some level that's just full of a bunch of bullet bills to get that thing that looked like. You know, like you had like a jet instead yeah, of feet. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I would assume it would be something like that because, I mean, we are, it's easy to forget. That's real. The, for, when the original Mario Maker came out, do you remember that even just the assets they gave you were extremely limited? You have to like pretty、yeah. much unlock everything、oh, by yeah, playing, yeah, yeah. you know, and playing the different modes then、mm-hmm. and stuff. So who knows if they'll keep it a little more open right when you get it? Yeah. I also wonder if some of the stuff will be unlocked by. Uh, on the creator end, by like create one auto scroll level, Cre-、mm. not just complete one, but create、right. a type of this to encourage people to try different levels and also encourage people to keep making levels、yeah. to unlock that stuff because, you know, obviously. The game, like the online、yeah. component of the game, is really going to rely on like, the one thing, creators con- constantly making new levels.、Yeah. I don't know how much you ran into this, Don, but one thing I, I, I hope that they've Try to work around with, especially with something like this where like you're earning things, right? Is uh, I don't know how much time you ever put in Little Big Planet, but do you remember like、oh, Little、yeah. Big Planet? Like a lot of like the most popular creations、yeah. were just things that like gave you a bunch of stuff for free, yeah, <laughs> you know. And so, like, I hope that whatever system that they've done to let people earn things. Isn't so easily exploitable to where like people are just like, here you go, here's this like A to B level that's not interesting at all, but it completes your requirement. You And、know? that's what, yeah, yeah. it will attract everyone, right? Yeah, hopefully not.、Um, you know, it popped into my head what I was going to say before、okay. regarding the sharing the levels. The one other feature, which I don't know if they added to this, but I really, it, it would be useful, is being able to update your level without、oh. having to. Reload it as、oh, a separate、yeah. level with the same name because that would very, very often happen where you publish the level and you know it obviously works because you can finish it, but you, you, people would discover things about it that would be problematic, or you just f- find ways of improving it. Or if you're working together with someone co op now in this one, it would make a lot of sense for you to be able to replace the level, you know, with yeah, like the, a patched version or instead whatever. Instead of uploading you know? like You're saying separate one and calling it like V2. Two, but, yeah, which、updated. most people would have to do would, fixed, you know. And, I bet、uh, Don what they could do and how, what I hope they do is you said, you said like patches and stuff. Like you go to that level again and it'll say like, it is on this date, it was updated and has like the c- newer version at yeah, the top. Yeah, you can、great. still see like the older versions. Oh, dude, that'd maybe be super cool. not forever, but temporarily、yeah. or something like that. So you could see like, oh, this is what they fixed and stuff. You can even write your own you like, patch, patch notes. notes. Dude, <laughs>、oh, Huber, we're talking to you, baby.、Um, oh, God. Dude, that would be so cool. I mean, it kind of would be neat too if they like, kept the old versions just for the heck of it, but that wouldn't be necessary. But it would be neat like if you could actually try out whatever, if you know, you could jump to the, see the evolution of the level. At the very least, I think patch notes, like having a little blurb there,、yeah. would be like I、useful. think that'd be great too, because the thing is, is.、Um Especially for one of the things when people first get this game, the first one and this one, you know, there's a rush to publish your levels. I think there's like this natural thing of like people, not,、mm. they don't just want to design it, but they really want to publish it almost immediately and start、mm-hmm. getting feedback, start having. And, and then, like, obviously, you can continue to refine a level so much more, even if you don't even, you know, if you're like, oh, this level works, sure. But then it's like, you know, you continually think of ways to refine it. And I think、yeah. that'd be nice I mean, to be able to refine、anything. levels without having to I mean, replace it. Ba- go back to that、yeah. retrospective. Yeah. Like, we're, well, exactly. about, like, we're on like version 8 of this. YouTube isn't、yeah. letting <laughs> us replace files. <laughs> Ben's still adding part- lines to the、yeah. script. I'm like, Ben, stop. We got it. We got it. <laughs> We've announced it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. How would you like this, Don?、Um, well, you're talking about that, I had an idea. Yeah. What if, because the current rule for original Mario Maker was that you had to beat your own level before you could upload it,、yes. or anyone else could try it. Yeah. Unless they're on your own Switch.、Uh-huh. What if there was a way, at least if, with people on your friends list, you could upload a beta version of your level, even if you haven't completed it,、yes. and let people be able to play through parts? Dude, that like, would be so. So, wouldn't it be open to the public or even a category that said beta, beta. level? Yeah, I was just、yeah. going to say, do it as beta, maybe. Yeah,、early、have、access. a separate category. Yeah, have an early access. It's really <laughs> fun for people anyway, because then they get to really play as developers. You know what I mean? Like, that,、uh, and yeah, users, besides their comments, it'd be cool you know, if it could fit. Filter those and kind of curate those into something more like you know, cohesive. So, you as a creator, see, like, oh, here is today's feedback on this level on beta version, whatever. Dude, that'd be super cool. Yeah, I think this, I hope they do something like this. Yeah, yeah, that would be very, very useful. And it seems well within the realm of what they can、mm-hmm. do. So, it's just a matter of if they decide to include it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, 
everyone's going to start somewhere at the Mario Maker Dawn. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think they realize that. They realize that there will be newcomers to this who aren't as well versed in the tools and what they do in the game. And uh, it seems like their answer to the tutorial and like the teaching uh, mechanism for this game is a new story mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what did you think about that that reveal with uh, the, there would be a story mode, like a hundred plus levels. Yeah, so yeah. The, what they said, a hundred plus levels that are designed by Nintendo, by Nintendo yes. right? So it's like essentially, so you gotta wonder, are these full size Mario levels? Or are they kind of miniature levels? Because it sounds like you get tasks you're assigned with Correct. for each level. And when you play them, you un- you receive whatever either new item. You're assigned with uh, whatever goal you need to achieve by yeah. Yeah, the, it, within the level. Um, so my only question is, I wonder if these will be kind of like mini levels or if they'll actually be full-blown like classic sort of Mario levels is a good question because that'd yeah. be pretty impressive. It was, it was, I mean, that's a whole game. You know, That's like a big game. If it's 100 levels, it's a full game. Yeah. I feel like um, you'll get a, probably a variety of different level types in there yeah um but uh but bloodworth the the story mode the the premise of it you're trying to build or rebuild princess peach's castle essentially and you go around the different toads and they give you different things and you earn coins to do that so to you is that like is that like an appealing aspect to 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 be added to to the sequel essentially yeah I i think it's very appealing and i think it's um i think it's i mean obviously the first game did really well, so it's not quite necessary. But I think there's definitely this stigma that it has to where, oh, this isn't a real game. You know, this is just, it's just a level editor. Nintendo's charging you for a level editor, you know, and like, just like really like, uh, like really just putting down the game because it didn't have a huge set of original levels. And so now it's like, it's there. Like, you know, you could have, you know, this game without a level editor and it would still be worth buying and and i think that's what some people are just looking for like they just want there to feel like there was a lot of design on that side of things to really show off what this game can do yeah. and it sounds like uh you know an interesting approach to like also people that want that classic more classic mario experience there but then also to be eased into the whole building side of it because essentially it, it seemed like it sort of gave you mini tutorials in a way right as you progress yeah. through the castle so i assume there's like it gets more complicated with the type of building assignments they give you so you can sort of wrap your head around some of the things that maybe just uh, you know you don't think of naturally um but also specifically they're saying the levels they design that you get to play are are like showing you examples of that's, so I assume yeah, like I, I have a feeling you'll play thing, yeah. the level and then after that in the next room or area you go to like some of those principles you just played through you're gonna try to build yourself and recreate mm, I'm assuming I, I don't know if that's how it'll go but it, it would be, it would be interesting too if like they could just kind of like scale back and like let you like deconstruct that level and see all how all the yes, parts actually work with together. all level editor games i wish they would include that where where you, it would be awesome if you could even copy and paste sections like the same way i was talking about uh, sharing sections of you know you build a mechanism you build an area that works a kind of sort of way you want to duplicate that whole thing and just bring it into your level and then tweak it as you like you know but but to get it all working and functioning properly you kind of it's easier you know sometimes to just copy and paste. Yeah. I, be, I, I honestly believe that they will probably, at, either whether you have to beat the level or not, they'll probably give you a way for each of those 100 plus levels to view them in like your editor tool editor, mode. in editor mode that and see sweet. how they work. Like, here, play through it and like yeah. so you can wrap your head around. Like, this level will focus on seesaws and stuff. Yes, so yes, yes, we're going to show you how different ideas you can kind of get from this. Now the levels, once you be like, now the level is available to you in the level editor. Yeah. Go see how we actually set it up yeah. and, you know, and like, good luck with that. And then, yeah, take it in your own direction. Like, it'd be so cool if yeah. you could just switch over from the pre-designed Mario level to like, suddenly it's in editor mode. All of the assets are then assets that you can manipulate, and you can just modify it to be your own little. I mean, that kind of thing I think also would bring in so many people that are like a little timid about just starting from a blank slate. You know what I mean? Because they just have yeah. a whole. They can just then tweak it and mess with it and start having immediate fun off something that already functions. So wasn't there? Uh, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. Was there like a like a quote unquote remix function? Do they call things remixes. Am I getting mixed uh, up with some other game? I, you, there may have been, but that's not popping out yeah, to me right sure. now. Yeah, I'm not. I'm re- blanking I'm not on that too, anything. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but one, well, not necessarily remixing a level, but new styles for the levels. They did talk about new, essentially, uh, what are they called? New course themes. 
Yeah. That they'll oh, be right. adding. Yeah. yeah. So like not like a overall like another game theme, but yeah. like just like environments and things that we didn't have yet. Yeah, like the desert, the that was it got the desert, snow, forest, sky, yep. and uh new or musical arrangements from Koji Kondo. And we yes, got to hear dude, those. Yeah, we yeah. heard them first, and then they told oh, us. Like, well, yeah, this, that was. What yeah. is this song? Yeah. Hello. We're like, Excuse this, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> that was like, that was such a treat to That's see big. that. Like, that yeah. got me excited. Super. But wrapped into that as well was the announcement about, oh, hi, moon levels. <laughs> yeah. Like the moon. And you're like, oh, angry sun, and now moon. And you're like, oh, angry moon. No, it's jolly moon. Yeah. And it's it acts like the angry sun. And we get it, it like, in the example they showed, it destroyed all the enemies. It removed yeah. them from the level and gave you the points for them. But it does more than that, Don. Yes. You saw. It changes the properties of levels yes. from day to night. And what did you think about the examples they showed you with that? It was super cool. It was fun, man. They sh- they showed, what was it? I don't know if I'll get the right levels right, but when you en- enable moon mode, which turns it into night, right? yes. or a darker theme overall, depending what your background is, uh, snow becomes like super slippery. Yes. Gravity becomes lightened. On the sky it, levels, in yeah. In certain cases, gravity becomes becomes reversed. Underground levels reverses the gravity. Yeah, so depending what yes. type of level you're doing, they have other like uh, parameters that come into play. It looks super fun. I mean, I love it. And then the moon thing, though, I guess that just creates, when you collect the moon, it just wipes out everything on the screen yeah. Yeah, that you're in. So, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I don't know if you, like, I didn't quite get it confirmed or not if they you can toggle a level between them that was my big action question, to yeah. toggle right. that or if it's just gonna, I think it's probably just gonna be set just as a I think moon it's preset level. Or, or in the or desert or they yeah. said a desert it would create a windstorm yeah you know? yeah, so, yeah the but forest I didn't had see water turning into poison water or whatever and then and mushrooms goom- into rotten mushrooms yeah and then they something about like some levels have goombas floating or whatever yeah right? just kind of floating spinning. with like ghost, light gravity ghost houses were darker yeah oh, right, yeah ghost la- cool. goes into spotlight mode where you're playing with just the spotlight over but here. yeah, uh, I mean, the gravity one in particular would be really interesting if you could set a trigger in the level, you know, because I would love that. You know, like you're going, you're going through the level on the ground, but you get to the end, and like you get a trigger, and like okay, now you got to go backwards through the level on the yeah. ceiling, and then you can get into like a, a pipe or something that's on the top. Yeah, Damiano, you mentioned it earlier when we were talking, um, you know, Mar- Galaxy, some of the reverse gravity where you'd switch gravity up and down. I mean, yeah. some of those are some of my favorite <laughs> levels, honestly. I had a lot of fun with them, but I think it would work great in 2D, too. It would be oh, yeah. super fun if they made that. Uh, well, yeah, a lot of the ones even in yeah, Galaxy yeah. are essentially 2D. Exactly. I guess yeah. so, yeah, just ro- kind of rotating. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. They definitely had some of that, yeah. you know, they could definitely use it. But even just the concept of, like, a whole level doing that is pretty cool as well. Oh, yeah. Because they didn't even show you very complicated uh like designs thrown in on top of that like oh right. underground level was just running around a little part of the level i believe but like throw in now scrolling custom scrolling and water rising and like yeah. and, and then switch it like all the riding stuff, a track like, like, yeah. upside down and like there's jump. so yeah. much they could like start throwing in there and stuff like a seesaw would mess me up so oh, bad God. Yeah. Like, no <laughs> stop <laughs> please stop <laughs> it's all backwards yeah. why is this happening um they did, speaking of styles and uh, new, new types, they did do a deep dive into the the newest one, uh, the Super Mario 3D World yeah. uh, design style, which is going to be its own separate style from the 2D styles. Right. So in the past, yeah. you could switch, you could design your level and you could start off and be like, this is a water level in Mario 3. But then if you wanted, you could just press a button and switch the theme to desert of Super Mario World. And it would accordingly swap out yes. all the assets and your level would essentially still function or sometimes it wouldn't we had a don's design challenge i think one of the game changers <laughs> was change it from like a water from whatever your level is to a water or something and sometimes it can have really funny results yes. <laughs> but um yeah so but with the 3d world it doesn't function like that it's its own motif or whatever so you can't just swap it between others you have to start and end with the mario world because they have all their own yep. unique uh yeah i think that's the thing is uh, like i've seen people that are disappointed in that but it, like there's just so many different mechanics uh, that yeah. really i i don't think they mesh very well with the other styles it's like it's a really it's a different kind of game yep they 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 
went over a lot of those points, Budworth. Yeah. They, they try, I think they did their best to illustrate this is why it needs to stay in a different classification. Yeah. And they started with the, the most obvious and probably like the, the biggest reason why, Cat Mario. Right. Yeah. Because you can cry, climb just a, up an obstacle in front of you, but the, it would be equivalent of the backgrounds in the 2D stages. Yeah. Climbing up those vertically, and it's like, oh, wait, uh... When, how would that work in right. the 2D games? Because it's flat. You don't. It's not 3D. It's not represented in 3D. So that's a good thing. They had yeah. it, in the original one. They did have like a couple of items. Um, yeah, I'm trying like to a remember specifically Mario, what it was. Right? Yeah. Well, not only that, but like there were, were items that wouldn't switch over because they were only in one of the games. And I'm trying to remember what they were. I New think Super it was the Marbles. boot. Where you could ride in the boot Karibos from boot? like part two, two? yeah, um, or three, yeah. or three, oh, yeah. And then when you switch over, if you swapped pallets, it would actually you wouldn't be able to use that. You know, there were certain items that just wouldn't function, so they disappear and eat or become something else. But yeah, with the three D world, it seems like there's just like a lot of different functionality that wouldn't make sense. Yeah, they talked about like clear pipes. I could see technically working in two D. I those gotta say, were, yeah, clear those, pipes those. was the one asset that stuck out at being. I would be really disappointed not to put those in just all of the two D ones because. Why well, yeah, not? it doesn't sound I mean, like it is. Or even like if they don't function like clear pipes, where you you know you'd use them to travel visibly like that. Like why not still not just be able to make the pipes clear? You know. <laughs> yeah, I wonder, I wonder if there's any conflict with like the sprites or something uh, like like right. some sort of, sort of object designs in the older oh, games knows, might not yeah. wor- something that they Wouldn't just in their play testing. Right, they're yeah. like ah that doesn't quite work right. Mm. Um, but those, there are definitely some things in there, like they talk about like the blinking blocks and the, yeah, the, yep. the blocks that kind of follow the invisible paths and stuff. And like you conceivably should be able to do that. In yeah, the but 2D it's interesting because they yeah. put them, they put those under the Super Mario 3D stuff in the email under like the. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, like, so it was like, in that whole section. Yeah, so it's like, are those some of these not just restricted? Like Cat Mario is obviously restricted to this, yeah. but like, yeah, our clear pipes, our track blocks, the the yeah. the block cell falling path, the uh, blood segment, are the piranha creepers. Uh, mm, you yeah, know, draw yeah. the path and then uh, the you know they'll, they'll follow you like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's even restricted. the Koopa Troopa car. It's like. They only showed that in 3D because I think it's restricted to 3D. Is it because yeah. like the model and stuff? But like, there's nothing that says I couldn't work in 2D technically. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's curious why actually they wouldn't include it. Unless right? maybe there's, I don't know. Maybe there's you know again with the way the assets are designed, like there's just a whole other, you know, like physics system and engine and everything that's running that. Yeah. That's very separate from what I the rest of the games are. Wonder if it's something physics related that they couldn't quite get right or something. Talking about that, maybe I can bring up this point because sure. it kind of connects to it. Um, that was one thing that hasn't been uh, talked about yet that I'm really curious is um, one of the things in the first one was you ran into a, quite a few limitations with the number of assets you could use within your level, right? Mm. And yeah. so different assets had different – like you could place a lot more bricks than you could of certain types of enemies and stuff like that. And, sure, because uh, enemies, as simple as it is, they have AI attached right. to them. Yeah, yeah, and more complicated. So you don't. Uh, the thing is, there would never be a clear way of knowing, like, well, how many of this or how many of that, and that would change depending what you use. I assume you know certain items would just become grayed out. But I'm hoping that there's like a massive expansion in the number of assets you can yeah. use because the first one really needed that. I mean. Even one time I tried to design a level where just using one horizontal canvas, I tried to split up into quadrants just using a single thick brick line, but I tried to separate the entire stage into two vertical with rooms and stuff, and I couldn't even get to the end using even single uh, bricks, you know what I mean? So that's a problem, I think, and I'm hoping... I would assume they have the power uh, on the Switch to do it. I, I don't think why not that they do Yeah, there definitely should be more power memory I mean, at, uh, available. They showed yeah. several shots where you have a massive amount of moving enemies on screen at the same time, you know. But oh, I'm yeah. wondering about in the whole level if there will be a limit to a, a much higher ceiling to how many assets you could use. And... Um, I mean, the thing that would be amazing, really, is if the thing they would could... be amazing if there was a limit break. Mechanic, where like, oh, you've hit the limit, but then you find some way <laughs> to smash. <laughs> if they could give you a percentage, <laughs> blood is what I was gonna say. If they can give you a percentage, okay. like so, so that if you hit that limit you could then know like well what is using what percentage like what if i delete 3 uh, of these yes. creatures yes, yes, yes. will it mean i, like I can that. then yeah. get 
six of the, you know what I mean? Like, like a, some kind of yeah. value to things in terms of memory or like whatever. A, like file finder on your PC and stuff. They'll show yeah. you like every folder, like what's the biggest size and stuff. It's like, and, and like you said, percent, like making sure like a, a graph or something, like a like a pie chart. Right. And like you say, it'd be like the paratroopers are taking up like 5%. Like exactly, why? Yes. And it's like, oh, you, you stack them different types too close and you put like, you, you, I don't know, like whatever reason, or you, you, you too many like ground tiles or whatever yeah. for the ground take up like 25%. It's like, do I really need to use that many or could I like right. cut corners here? It would here make right. you bit, design yeah. in a more efficient way. It'd be so helpful because mm. a lot of times in the past when you run into those walls, you just like have to start guessing and deleting stuff and that kind of sucks, you know, because if you knew exactly what was causing you're taking up what uh, you know amount of memory you could like you know decide okay I need to make this part of it more efficient or oh I really don't need this if I get you know it's causing me to sacrifice so much of the other part so I don't know if they'll include that but if nothing else I hope the limits are way 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 higher you yeah know, so we can really oh, yeah. use a I massive that number too, yeah. of assets and For sure. um, and also the canvas sizes related to that the size of the can- they did show us now you can do vertical sub levels and everything which is awesome. Uh, vertical canvas and and horizontal, but um, in terms of like the actual scale of yeah. horizontal, like that I think definitely could be expanded upon. You know, like the horizontal levels or vert- horizontal levels, the vertical space within the horizontal level should be a lot greater. Okay. Et cetera, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the horizontal levels are fine because most of the time those are uh, scrolling often, but um, especially the vertical levels or the vertical levels. Okay. But okay. On the horizontal Starting to get mixed levels, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the horizontal levels, uh, having <laughs> a lot more vertical space. Got it. Uh, I think we yeah, so had some you know, like alternate paths up there and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Got to do that. Um, they spent a good amount of time talking about, we already talked about like the player profile, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When they, they started going into the online stuff, but then they got into mo- like multiplayer, how you're going to yeah. play multiplayer not creating multiplayer yeah. but playing multiplayer and uh yeah they got a versus mode yeah <laughs> a, a multiplayer versus mode in yeah. super mario maker with, with 2 with ian's hated uh mm-hmm. bouncing <laughs> characters yes there's that you can run into other characters and you will bounce them around yep. and uh they're like they were showing like yeah like maybe staying behind is a better tactic or you know like boss battles, like well, maybe you want to like set your differences aside. I was like, no, yeah, no, no not at all. <laughs> yeah, said so maybe set your differences aside for the boss battle. You're like, no. So, yeah, how do you feel about them? Like, and it's gonna be like a category to like search for, so they'll encourage people to make levels like that. Yeah, how do you feel about like them rolling in like, like a, a competitive angle to this in terms of like a multiplayer competitive angle in this? I love it because you know it all the co-op Mario was already basically like <laughs> fighting against being competitive, <laughs> you know, because it's like super hard to play co- cooperatively even in uh, some of the well-designed levels. So this makes it really fun because you're thinking as a designer, you're thinking in a totally different way. You're thinking in a way of making it so that there is only one way to get through this. You know, you narrow passage. There are choke points. There are areas where you know you're going to create yeah. fights, you know, and stuff like that. And that's a lot of fun because that's a completely different approach to how you'd be designing you know, uh, even a co-op level, anything, you're thinking about things totally differently. Or, like, have a switch that, like, puts, you know, like, that actually triggers a thwomp, and, like, whoever gets up to that switch first is just going to crush the other people. Yeah. 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 All kind, dude, you can make, <laughs> yeah, like, little there's... mini battle arenas within the level that you temporarily involve in, and then you can keep progressing. You can do, like, so many things. Hey, you can use, like, complete objectives, like, you know, First person to kill like X amount of enemies or something, oh, putting people yes, in a room dude. or whatever. Dude, yeah, <laughs> that would be so cool. The objectives with the co-op. And, like that person, four person battle royale. Dude. <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting if like oh you could start them at different parts okay. of the map. Like that would be battle awesome. royale. I really wish you could do that. Have pick if yeah, they, have pickups like have like a fire flower over dude, here and a cape oh over God. there. That would be sick. If they can't do that, Dawn, yeah. here's another thing for you. Yeah. Start so everyone starts in room A or room one. Yeah. And it's like kill the enemies. Yeah. Whoever does it, they get to pass through the door, like or or they pass through the door and then like it it drops like, you know, everyone down or something. And like you lose, like you lose people each room or whatever. Like only three oh, people make yes. it through. So like one person's <laughs> axe each level. So you make like a four room challenge or three room oh, challenge. Chambers or of makes death. the end or whatever. Or you, you drop death. them down to like a lower level where it's just like a, like it's just a hallway, uh-huh. and they gotta wait for everyone to complete. And then the person who's up there gets like you know a power up or something. 
so they have a benefit in the next one. So do three room challenges. Everyone who the l- worst person falls down to the little hallway below it, <laughs> and so they keep walking right with the people who advance right to each floor, and then the person keeps falling down. And after you get to the last room, okay, that person won. You get a fire flower now. Then you all rejoin and do like another set of rooms. Like that would yeah, be so dude. cool. Like doing oh, challenge man. rooms and yeah. the weakest link falls. Oh, Dawn. Super the battle fun. royale thing. If they battle could do royale that. Would be yes. like, if you could assign starting positions oh, that are on yes. different parts of the multiple. Mm. Oh, dude. That would change yes. Or again, like kind of like a trial by fire kind of thing where like it's the first. So like, kind of a similar thing where like the first person gets into a room and like they get a power up. But then it also triggers like a flame, uh-huh. like that blocks the whole hallway. So th- everyone has to pass through that flame, and so yeah. <laughs> the only person with the power up is the first person that got in that room. So you're automatically, yeah, you're just stacking you're, advantages yeah. as you go through. <laughs> in the first game for co-op, like because we have there's four player co-op in this one. Yeah. Did you ever see any like in terms of co-op the level of the intricacy? What if you could start four people in different spots, mm-hmm. and each person has to solve their room to let other people advance to the next room? Oh, yeah. So yes. like, oh, yeah. Yes, okay. dude. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So like, I, like, let's just do let's do two player for the sake of making it easier. So it's like I move to room A, and you move to room A. Like, like on like we're above each other, above and below. Yes. Like, I can't advance, but. Until you solve your puzzle, dude. You solve it, it opens the room for me. I yes. move the next room. Now I gotta solve my puzzle so you can get there. And in some rooms, we need both of us in there. To, oh. You're brilliant, Damiani. Yes. That would be. I mean, I've seen it before. Uh, the, it's well, not my yeah, idea. the new Kir- <laughs> no, but the new Kirby. Uh, yeah. Is it still the new? I don't know. Was uh, right? The one That's last still the year, new yeah, yeah. for Switch. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. The most recent. Kirby. That one did it brilliantly on several levels where okay. it was like splitting the level where you'd be you'd have got you know you're because you form your little team. But uh, if you're doing co-op, you know, yeah, you'd be on the top, you'd be on the bottom, and it was and a lot of those were auto scrolling too so there's like mm-hmm. pressure of like these people need to complete something to let these people go and there's like you know all these like threats that are constantly yeah. bearing down on them I didn't even think about that that's a whole different way of thinking of designing <laughs> levels too which would be really fun I like that jeez um, they also offered another uh, they sh- sh- revealed how you're going to be able to play with other people mm. essentially so there's a uh, there's nearby play if up to four players each own a Nintendo Switch system and a copy of the game, so it's not not the old way of one person owns a game right. and like you all can yeah. locally I mean, download still games it. that do that. But there not are this still, one, yeah. but I, they feel like they're moving away from that a little mm-hmm. bit more. Um, the one person can set up a virtual room as long as they have a stable, persistent internet connection that everyone else joins as well, like that. Yeah. Um, but like it's gonna, you're gonna be playing online with other people essentially. Yeah. This is the only way you can play like locally with other people, but there's no traditional local co-op though. It's mm. all online with other people. You can play friends. I'm sure there would be a friends mode or a random people mode. But uh, there, it's more of them pushing you towards, like, this game requires an online subscription for a lot of uh, the content to access it. Yeah. yeah. Sure. I wonder, like, yeah, how, how do you both – I mean, w- was this expected? We've talked about this a lot. Yeah, was it expected? Th- and do you feel like what they've done justifies uh, – do you feel they've done enough to justify it or not? I mean, I think it was expected I mean, in terms of – Justification. I mean, there's that's like a, the whole gigantic yeah. argument that's gone back to the beginning of Xbox Live. So, yeah. Um, well, I guess let me rephrase it. Are you, are either of you sad that there is no traditional local like co-op? I mean, did the first game have anything like that? Uh, no. I just think that's yeah. another thing. Like we were just playing uh, a Switch game called Unruly Heroes mm. on Group Stream. And, like, one of the issues that you have to solve is what happens when people go off screen, you know? What happens when people die? And, you know, we've we've seen, like, the new Super Mario Brothers games tackle that. We've seen Rayman games tackle that. But, like, I think this is a game where, like, if they didn't have as much of a budget, probably. And so we saw, like, oh, they're... That can be problematic if you don't get it perfect. You know, it's where, like, somebody would revive me and I wouldn't pop up where I expected and I would just die the second later and have to wait to get revived again. So I I think that they just wanted to avoid having to deal with that whole mess on top of the myriad ways that people could design levels. I guess my issue with the, uh, my concern with the the nearby play option is that you do need four individual switches. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, if if you had four switches, we brought them into the, the streaming room, four of our switches. We still have to have one person go online and join their room. So we're technically playing online. Yeah, that part which is forces, weird. Which forces yeah. us, we all four of us need, or one, I, I'm assuming only one of us needs the paid subscription Yeah, at the it sounds point. like the host needs the Yeah, the paid subscription. So at least you can run up. But why, w- 
it's still kind of like forcing somebody yeah. to be a part of that ecosystem. Whereas we, the question, the obvious question is, if we just have four switches and that functionality exists, why do we need to go online? Why can't we just play the, uh, the level we downloaded together yeah. now? That's you know? a very good point. Yeah, yeah you, I guess it, that's the question's going to come up. It is, yeah. Like Blitz Maybe said, it ties it, into the, the maker progression stuff and the achievements and they want to be able to make sure everyone gets rewarded properly. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I didn't think of that as well. Um, not a huge surprise, but yeah, you're right. That feels a little odd that you'd say, well, why wouldn't we be able to, especially if we do bring several yeah. switches? I mean, I, yeah. Hmm. Um, I wonder, too, how much they want to like be able to like provide people like those stats of like how many people are playing their levels. Hmm. But then they do have the, the offline download option, so I don't know how that plays into that, whether you just... It just you know, updates the number when you reconnect or something. Mm. Well, the remainder of the stuff I have in here is more about the details of the release and stuff. So before we move on to that, Don, was there any things we didn't touch upon content-wise that you still want to uh, let me look, talk about? Let me scan quick? through here real fast. I think we pretty much uh, touched on most of the important things I wanted to mention. Um, link well. Oh yeah, no, you know, no over. Uh, something we we didn't see oh, an yeah. over. One thing I was really, really hoping yeah. for, which we haven't seen yet, which still may be there, is to be able to link levels together to create your own mini world, and also in doing that, maybe having a overworld map maker yeah. that went with this. You, same thing. You break the different styles down. You know, Mario uh, Three and uh, Super Mario World and. Uh, have the overworld you could design would be super fun. I've always been a huge fan of little overworld maps, even if it's just navigating the levels, and that'd be so fun to design something like that. But who knows? I mean, it still may be there. You got me excited when you brought that idea up on the stream, our reaction stream, Don. Yeah. And thinking about it now, I really hope at some point they can make it possible. Even if it's not launch, it's something they patch in later. Yeah. Because not only is it cool just to see your levels strung together with an overworld map, but imagine, like, now you have to think about, can you make secret exits in your level? Yeah. Yes. And make branching paths secret on the world levels, map. Dude. Oh, yeah. like, yeah, like Mario, like Super yeah. Mario World. Yeah. It's like, oh, you, there's conditions you can trigger. Yes, it's yes, like, yes. Dude, that, that, that so changes cool. the whole dynamic there because then you can, like, upload. What if you have to upload, like, a world now? Like, here is my dino world, and which comes with six custom levels, and, you know, like, a, a one, br like, one's a secret level. See if you can find it and stuff. It's like, that would be stunning. Dude, be and imagine so because they have the level <laughs> conditions now, right. you could almost make it like yes. a tiny little RPG in a way where you have to go, you can even have to replay level. Like you could, you know, get something in one level that gives you access to another level that then you'd have to revisit one of the other levels you were already at, you know, uh, to go back and forth to make like a tiny little <laughs> simple RPG would be neat. So um, good. The what else? Uh, oh, and I guess one big question I have that we brought up uh, on our reaction was um, how it'll work if you know at home, right? Um, mm. The Wii U was so particularly perfect for Mario Maker. The gamepad made so much sense, and I often played the game uh, either just straight off the gamepad at old game trailers. I used to bring my Wii U in all yeah. the time, and I'd have it in the office, and I would often just be playing, you know, completely off the gamepad. But at home, I, you'd always be playing with the gamepad because it was, you know, required, but it was, like, essential. And it was this constant back and forth. There was never a time where you just looked at the TV and played. And so I'm curious how that'll work with the docking feature. And you mentioned maybe a cable or something I think would be re really help so that you can essentially use the, you know, switch as your gamepad and still go back and forth with the big screen because it just... I don't know. It, it was really fun. You know, it worked great in the first one, and it'd be a shame if we lost that aspect. Yeah, I. That's what I was like. Uh, that's what I was always hoping. Like something about a new Switch revision would be announced on top of this, especially during yeah, this direct, right, because yeah. that. Pro I, I know you've had that like concern or that question you yeah. want to be answered. I know other people have that question about well, how do I get all that back that I everything I had the benefits I had of playing on the Wii U with the gamepad and the television screen yeah. at the same time. How will I get that on Switch? And that has not been answered. Right. It doesn't seem right. like it probably will be answered. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I don't know if there's any way yeah. to firmware update to where it 
you know keeps the screen on while you know you're connected. Yeah, I th- yeah, I feel like I mean the, you'd need you would need another type of need, uh, connection. They, yeah. they would yeah. probably have to make a new type of like clamp thing that goes on the bottom mm. that like essentially splits the signal like tells it to stay on while also takes the video signal yeah it probably needs to be powered as well like the dock but something that doesn't cover up the screen so like you probably have to like like a clamp you probably snap on the bottom of your switch yeah and then it has like an hdmi out to your tv so like you still like you know still gotta play it it will not be i doubt it it'll have to be wired absolutely have to be a wired connection but you could still hold your switch and play it while going to that which even that it's possible, but I don't it's know. It's not if do ideal, yeah. but you know, it would be really nice. Just yeah, like give us like a twenty foot cable or something, and just you know, so you don't have any w- trouble with that. Yeah, uh, I mean, it would be more expensive for sure. But the Wii U clearly, you know, did it. So I wonder if it would even be possible for like some way to like create like a little wireless hub. Mm-hmm. You know, that just like takes the signal from the switch and then takes oh, to Oh, like TV. Apple TV and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. Like, a, okay. It seems yeah. like it's. A, yeah, Amazon, what is it? Fire, Amazon Fire TV or yeah. Connect or not connect. Kindle. But it's just like, yeah, just like a whole different dimension of engineering. So that's yeah. why I'm not sure that, like, you know, could they do that with the firmware update or is it just too far out there? So that's, but so that's the thing though. That's a part of the issue though, is because here's the thing. Okay. You using the stylus on the gamepad was an essential part of the first game, which I imagine has to be an essential part of this game. So if you lose that though, when you're at home, like, you know what I'm saying? Like if you're not able to use your switch as the gamepad that you're you assigning, you know, drawing the assets, et cetera, then that's bringing in a whole new thing of, well, then that means there is some other way of controlling it, I assume, just with the infrared signal from the uh, Wiimotes. Um, it, it changes the game. It changes yeah. the uh, gameplay. And it was so, so, so perfect before that it feels like it would be a slight step down in a way to not yeah. be able to I do I mean, that. I think to me it's fine to be able to use a stylus on the, the gamepad and not need a larger screen. Right. Uh, but it... I mean, there are certain, I mean, again, like going back to the design challenge videos, like that was a thing that actually helped a lot because like you could be changing things and we could like see it very clearly and communicate. Whereas if it's just the switch and like, okay, um, you know, and like you're trying to point at stuff like really awkwardly over somebody's shoulder. And it felt really good. I mean, it was one of the greatest feelings to sit on your couch and just, you know, I'd be like here, I'd be there, I'd be moving around, testing the level, you're back here. There's something like so natural and good about it, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, going back and forth. And the other thing that it brings up, though, is, okay, so if we're just playing in portable switch mode, then for extended periods of time with a stylus, like um, the other thing that was actually good for Mario Maker was the bulk of the game pad, was those big fat molded uh. handles because you could hold it with one hand for extended periods of time and do the stylus. Yeah. Whereas with this, you know, you get fatter some, and lighter. You get at some the same nasty time, yeah. cramps on your switch if you're holding, because you basically have to hold it like this if you're doing one hand. You know, for an extended period of time with a flat hand is what I'm doing. I wonder if there's any way with uh, the Switch dock that they could find a way to make the, the Wii, if you have a Wii U gamepad, connect to dock Switch. Oh, so dude. So you can see the signal uh, on that. Problem oh, solved. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it would be kind of funny. funny if you I had know. like uh, Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like, a, like yeah. an easel or like an arm that they have for, for a mic stand and like you just have like this this arm that like puts your sw- switch in front of you like a canvas, <laughs> but then like it also yeah. like plugs in so that it can be charging while you're drawing. Yeah, <laughs> they do have though like perif- um, third party uh, uh, like gr- you know cases that have yeah. the big bulky handles. I guess so that's just a workaround mm-hmm. for now. But who knows? Maybe uh, one of the future uh, they'll maybe they'll offer an alternate uh, Wiimote that'll be like a rounded you know shape. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, anything else? No, I guess that was about it. I think we covered a good amount. Yeah, so you, you uh, they talked a lot about uh, how this thing's going to be available. Um, and one of the things we'll get to is something you mentioned about the one of the ways you want, one of the things you want to use to play Super Mario Maker, um, which is not mentioned at all in any of these things. So before I dive into all the, the bundles and the things they're offering for you, in the North American video presentation for this, as far as we know, we, like, we watched this three hours after it went live. Uh, everyone in chat that we asked seemed to not be able to come up with it. And even the email we got from Nintendo mentioned no mention of a stylus 
for North American consumers. Yeah. Which is bizarre because yeah. we've known about it in Japan for weeks. Uh, the exact same direct mm-hmm. in the UK mm-hmm. shows the stylus. Yep. We got nothing. <laughs> got no idea. The, the, Exclusive to GameStop? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah. What is the possible explanation, though? What are some possible We don't know. The, so I, mean, I think uh, there was clarification on the UK one. Apparently, that is exclusive to a, cole- a, a special edition of some right. kind. Oh, okay. Yeah. Japan all- is the same thing. It's yeah. a limited edition. Yeah. You can also buy the limited edition uh, digitally, and you'll get a, a like a voucher um, for the stylus in Japan. But <laughs> nothing here. I feel like... the. The only thing I can come up with, Don, hmm. is that the, the, it will, there's more people who are going to buy it in North America, and they know how many people are going to try and pre-order it, and they just can't. They know there's no way to keep up with that. They, they will not have enough supply for it. And if they make it a limited edition that sells out really fast, they could see like, oh, like people are going to... Like the sales a little bit, yeah. I mean, my people might be upset, or people... It, basically, I feel like it might be as simple as they don't think they can make enough, or mm-hmm. they don't want to make enough for everyone for this game, because, think of it, Wii U came with one. 3DS came with one. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like, the game that came with it, it was the system, so anyone who was buying it already had one. Now it's like, we have to supply this for one game, and this... Theoretically, it gets to be like one of the only games that ever uses it. Like, there's so, an extra but, cost to it. So you're saying there's a possibility that it wouldn't even be available, though. Period. They even, might just, even as its own thing. They you might buy separately. They might. They might leave it up to the community to be like, find alternative solutions. Like, is there a third party for not for Switch, but yeah. for other devices, a type of style? Oh, yeah, that will work they're definitely for this? out there. And then yeah. the people just be like, go buy this one off Amazon. Go buy this, and right. they're hoping people who really want this will just go do it. So they're passing the buck on. So the question is though, but. If for the people that aren't going to do that, how do they intend you to play? You know. Well, they yeah they showed uh, they showed the Joy Cons. Joy Cons. Yeah. yeah. But that just it doesn't yeah. make sense. Like uh, I mean, there's and look, I have total faith in Nintendo, so I think they like have this figured out, obviously. But to me, at this point, I, it's like I need some kind something to create an epiphany because I don't understand how this game would work without a stylus. Like it's so essential to the core part of playing it. Like not having the stylus. Even with really accurate, you know, uh, infrared, just doesn't feel right. And I just don't see them withholding this the the, the announcement. Of, there's there's one other possible explanation. Yeah. Because I don't see them withholding this announcement. Like this is something you want to say now. Like you oh, want yeah. to like like people, I saw someone say, well, they're gonna shadow drop or not shadow. They're gonna announce it at E3 is like it's part of a surprise because they want to surprise E3. I'm like, that seems a little weird to say for E3. The reason I could see why they might, it might be happening, but they can't announce it because it's not it's not inked the deal is whoever they're using to supply yeah. the, the 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 stylus for them. Um, there could be an issue with that. The deal might not be finalized, as I said. You know, they might run into a production problem, and they're like, we can't announce it till it's actually official because that's like you know we can get sued for that. Yeah. Like, you know, let's we gotta wait. So maybe there'll be a follow up once. Mm. Like the hopeful, optimistic version is. Oh, it's gonna be. It w- there will be a version that has it. It's just they gotta wait to. They're waiting on something before they can officially say yeah. it will be available. Whereas in like the UK and Japan, they're using a different supplier, obviously, yeah. and it's like, oh, they they've got their things figured out already. It's just strange because I really assumed, yeah, on this direct they were gonna announce show it and they were gonna show that it was just gonna be packaged with not a special edition or anything like that was just gonna be yeah. packaged with it as part of it. Because even on the first Mario Maker it was like that was a whole part of the gameplay they constantly showed. They would show a hand, even part of the game graphics, yeah. you know. They would have the hand in there with the stylus and on this they just showed gameplay, but you never saw how those objects were really being placed or being moved in actual, you know, yeah. actuality. Um, that should be interesting, but I think who knows? It's, it's there's got to be a way. <laughs> it's a stylus. Movie. Yeah, like a little alarming, but I mean, there's still there's technically still time. Yeah, but I don't think they're withholding it because it's a secret, that the, like a surprise they want. Yeah, no, it's something right. odd it's though. Something it's odd that yeah. they have. I think to you know, as we saw this, you know, the solution in Japan with the digital version. I think yeah. the digital version makes this a whole lot more complicated. I think Nintendo really wants to be able to sell right, it digitally, right, right, yeah. right, and yeah. they're making a lot more money digitally That's a very this good generation. Point. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. now, what? Oh, how do we do this? Yeah. yeah. What, probably, is, what is the actual logistics of making this work? They probably might be working with uh, retailers yeah. to yeah. secure like that deal. Like, uh, if they come in with a voucher, like we're going to send you like a hundred, you know, yeah. individual styluses or styli. I forget for. Uh, 
for people to redeem. We will cover the like they're gonna have to cover the cost, but like they need to go in person. We don't want to have to mail these out, but maybe they do a collaboration with GameStop. It's like if you pre-order digitally, you'll get a code that you can go into your GameStop and redeem for a while supplies last or yeah. something. Yeah, that's true. And they true. could it, maybe just be available for five dollars for everybody else. Yeah. It, right, they'd have to, right? Yeah, it would have mm. to be available when you purchase the game. Uh, but I didn't think about that, though. Yeah, what about... I, I really didn't... That is the digital is what's causing the problem because what about people that are just downloading the game? Then they have to wait to get their stylus delivered? Even You know, that's kind of weird. Yeah, there's... Yeah, that's... Yeah, Unless that's, you pre-order, I guess. I think Yeah, I think it's just a logistical thing that's mm-hmm. holding it up at this point. Well, I bet there will be some kind of availability mm-hmm. for us. What what it, what it will be remains to be seen. On that point, have either of you used your touchscreen on your Switch at all for anything? Uh, just out of curiosity? I've definitely, um, yes. what is that, Severed? I played Severed on there. How was your experience with the touchscreen? Because I haven't even, I haven't I thought it was mine. fine. It was yeah. good, yeah. yeah. Uh, and you, just, I mean, just using your finger. Yeah. It was yeah. basically like the gamepad, but slightly better. I mean, uh. Um, well, I mean, the f- screen is definitely glassier, right? So it feels a little bit more like a phone yeah, or an iPad or something, yeah. Hmm. My was is for Final Fantasy X on Switch. Mm. There, there's a menu you can bring up with a tap on the left side. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it's just like and a it's tap. Just tapping. It's just tapping. Yeah. So, yeah. And same with you. There wasn't anything where you had to actually... Well, yeah. Sever, there's a lot of like... But it's like just, just motions, right? That, yeah. It's not actually like moving things or anything. I wonder. Yeah, maybe going through like... Opening a game or something. Sometimes I've like just hit it, like it double tap it, open mm. the game or something like that. But yeah, I don't really feel like a desire. I to use eat. it a lot for uh, putting in codes in the eShop. Just type. It's a lot easier for me to type. Oh, interesting. On yeah. the, the touch screen rather than yeah, you know, moving the the mm. control stick or whatever. Very curious how they're gonna mm. work this whole stylus thing out. We did get details on other things about how it's going to be available. Though. Yeah. Let's so go uh, really quick for those you know who it's, just haven't read it or seen it yet. But, I mean, uh, it's coming out June 28th. Um, it'll be a, there is a, a standalone version in stores and digitally um, on that day. There will also be a bundle that includes Super Mario Maker 2 and a 12-month individual membership to Nintendo Switch Online at a suggested retail price of $69.99, so $10 more than the base game, and they say that's a, a savings of $9.99 off the suggested retail price if you bought each of those separately. Yeah. So you're saving and about it's 10 stacks. bucks. So if you're already a member, yep. you, you get that extra. That's the yeah. key uh, selling point. That's a good thing. Yeah, so if you're like, oh, uh, I always forget to renew. Might as well just buy this now and like yep. the stack, so yeah, that's going to... That'll solve your problem there. They also announced a new voucher system that will be rolling out with the beginning of uh, with Mario Maker 2. Uh, basically, for $99.99, if you are a paid online Nintendo subscriber, for $99.99, you can purchase a set of two Nintendo games with these uh, the pair of vouchers. So it's a list of eligible games. But assume their full price, fifty nine ninety nine each. It will be a saving. Of but that's the weird thing. I was looking at the list, and yeah. some of those games are fifty dollar games. That's a problem. And so I'm like, you're paying a hundred dollars up front, but some of these games you're not getting any savings on. Like, well, what is Mario Maker yeah. Two is fifty nine ninety nine. So let's say if you use it right. for at least you, you maximum savings of roughly twenty, 20 nineteen ninety nine right. essentially if you bought two full price. Uh, yeah. Fifty nine ninety nine games. But I don't think you have to use the one for Mario Maker. You don't I, have to. No, yeah, it's, it's not just them for it's just rolling games. out. Yeah, uh, starting with Mario Maker would be the newest game you can use on. Though people are saying Fire Emblem was eligible because it is on the coming soon in the oh, eShop. Oh, was there? Yeah. Okay, apparently, um, or someone said it was announced somewhere. They kept showing a lot of older games yeah. though. But Blowworth, yeah, y- y- whatever the price difference is, you theoretically could save anywhere from up to nineteen ninety nine all the way to. It wasn't you. You didn't save any money. Yeah, yeah, basically. If you buy somehow every, buy two yeah, that's games. The thing. On, every game I saw yeah. was either fifty nine ninety nine or forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, so you, you could pick two forty nine ninety nine games and, and that, not save any money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like uh, yeah, you didn't save any money. You just like bought it at cost. So I just don't get why they're on the list. I don't yeah. understand. It's it's interesting. Um, but uh, the it's meant to be. Do you want to like? Buy two games digitally, and do you want to like you were gonna buy them anyway? Yeah, save save like twenty bucks. It's another incentive to be a part of the online ecosystem, essentially. And they said the second voucher is good for a year, I guess. Up to a year, and it yeah. sounds like it's the promotion is only running for yeah. a, a limited window as well. Yeah, you can only get the vouchers through the end of July. Yeah, so I'll be curious though to see you know future games that come out. I assume not all of them will be included in that voucher, right? Yeah, just. 
Who knows? Well, I mean, there'll be games that are probably won't be in the eShop yet. They, if they're not in the eShop listing, you can't apply it to it. Uh-huh. So, yeah, if it comes to – if you buy by the end of July and you wait till a year later when the promotion is about to expire at the last date, the end of next July, yeah. uh, 2020 – if it's not in the eShop yet, you can't use it on it. So yeah. whatever future games beyond that date mm-hmm. that aren't listed, yeah, you're out of luck. But, I mean, theoretically, you could buy two when these go live. If they're, I forget they're live now or when they're going live. But if you bought two of these, you can theoretically sit on them and be like, I'm going to use one for Animal Crossing. Yeah, right. When that right, becomes yeah, available. Yeah. I'm going to use one for something that comes out next year. It's yeah. just, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's an interesting system, and it's curious because um, – I, I I'm I'm curious why they've chosen to do it this way rather than giving discounts. It makes me feel like they've got to be applicable for some sort of giveaways or something like that, you know, or um, you know maybe I don't know, like maybe like you participate, you know, like the old Nintendo surveys and things like that, oh, yeah. you know, like somehow you oh, participate yeah. in some surveys. You get not only do you get your gold coins and your silver coins, but you oh. There's a you, you you've earned a voucher and like oh, woo yeah yeah because yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you can currently use your coins to you can use them yeah to, you can to, do that already yeah yeah right. for discounts and stuff as well that's like yeah they're they're trying a new take on the loyalty system which is like discounts because I think at the end of the day while there are people who like getting the old Club Nintendo system I get a reward like I get like a statue or a poster which are really awesome. I got a Mario hand towel. A broader, <laughs> I think a broader spectrum of consumers are more interested in, I saved five bucks on this yeah. thing. I saved ten bucks on this thing. Like Discounts, I think, will always be the most popular and widely yeah. adopted um, kind of like system, a loyalty system essentially over like reward systems that get you like gifts and stuff. It's like, eh, yep. it's okay. N- Nintendo of America never gave us all the cool Japanese soundtracks that, either. Oh. That's true. <laughs> Somehow, that's, that's somehow that's they true. would end up for sale in other shops, and I never understood that. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm buying it now. <laughs> oh yeah, because they probably had like the stores probably uh, had codes somehow. You know, I don't know how. Maybe they like whatever used GameStop. If they a game, they want to sell a game used or whatever. Maybe they took the code. I don't know. Like, be interesting. Someone, someone explain how all those shops had the <laughs> the, the Super Famicom controller for Wii that yeah. I got. Like, how, how were so many of those available on, like, PlayAsia or whatever yeah. at the time? I was like, well, I'm buying one. Yeah. Go, yeah. Go, let's go ahead. Um, but, yeah, that uh, the they ended it with, uh, after the vouchers, they, they ended it with just saying that there's going to be, um, as part of the festivities of E3, leading up to E3 as well, in addition to the Splatoon and the Smash Brothers thing they're doing, tournaments, they're going to do a Mario Maker 2 Invitational yeah. on uh, June 8th. And they gave a description of it. So I was like, how is this working? Oh, is, cool. is it going to be like the when they did the Mario Maker thing in the uh, video game world champion, oh. Nintendo World Championship thing they did a few years ago? Uh, four members of the Super Mario Maker community will compete in a variety of wild and unpredictable Super Mario Maker 2 courses designed by Nintendo's Treehouse team. Mm. Ah. Yeah. So it's uh, event will open up the festivities at the theater at the Ace Hotel in Los Angeles. At <laughs> a... Yes. Oh. Sorry. Okay. I've worked at venue for like three years. Okay. So. <laughs> I, <laughs> I love... know very well. <laughs> Starts at uh, 11 a.m. Um, okay. I don't know if this specific event, this the Super Mario Maker 2 Invitational, starts at 11 a.m., but all the things happen at day begin at starts at eleven a.m. and will run through the day. Uh huh. So yeah, that was that was the Mario Maker two direct. No yep. surprise announcement at the end. Yeah. Um. Just 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 went to the end. Um. But I got I got some patron questions for you for you both. Cool. Cool. Um. If you want to get through them, we got uh f- some for Mario Maker. Okay. And we got some for Don specifically. All right. Uh, some special Maybe questions. Please the fifth. On uh. So the first. Two. So I will give a shout. I did pick a question from Snow Cone Guy, but we we did actually answer it in the course of our discussion. Uh-huh. Um. About the uh the upgradable avatars and stuff. Um. Oh, things yeah. like that. Uh, this the next question from James. Part of it we could talk about. Um, we answered the second part of the question. We, we talked about a lot of multiplayer level ideas earlier, oh, yeah. but they actually uh, want to know: Hey, allies, with multiplayer versus and co-op being one of the new major additions, how popular do you think it will be compared to playing solo? Mm. Um. In terms of like building the le- people uh, building playing, playing. Or, like or playing, I think like it'll be quite level, popular yeah. for playing. Yeah. I think because it's instantly fun. Um, I, who knows? The building mm. it, it'll be interesting. I think it's gonna it's it's uh, harder in a lot of ways yeah. because 
it's harder to think about in many ways and we don't have like the same like depth of experience and knowledge and our because there haven't been you know like competitive multiplayer mario games like in the same way as single player right so uh, we don't have just a whole bunch of ideas already in our minds of like oh and this is a cool thing to do in this level and stuff you know so i have a feeling like there won't be a massive amount of levels being created compared to uh, the single player ones, but I think the mode to play it is going to be great. I think like here, like for Easy Allies, we're going to have a blast with it. You know, like groups of friends are going to have a lot of fun with the mode. You know. I feel like the, uh, Mario Maker 2 can make up like a whole month of group streams. Oh, dude, at least it feels <laughs> right. like it now, especially. Uh, what do you think, Blood? Yeah, Blood. Um, Oh, I like how popular one will be over the other. I think that most people will probably still gravitate towards single player. Um, but, yeah, what, like, new Super Mario Brothers Wii was, like, incredibly popular, right? And I'm curious how much multiplayer went into those. I remember we played through that um, uh, with with friends, like, over Thanksgiving. Like, we pretty much, like, went through that whole game. Oh, yeah. Um, cool. But I think they could keep uh, help incentivize people to play the playing part of it to play multiplayer whether it's versus or co-op um they could do something like weeklies or dailies essentially right uh, challenges that you have to fulfill like complete one versus stage or win a versus stage or something where you earn coins which you can spend on the costume stuff oh, like yeah. i feel like if they could tie it into a system like that they could incentivize people to keep playing and maybe they have like seasonal things like uh oh like this month we're doing like a uh a whatever like a Mario like Tanuki theme outfit you can only get like this week if you know you get enough coins oh, yeah. or whatever sure. or something yeah, like yeah. that. No, that I think they could do it but I do think in the end of the day just by the nature of it solo will be the most popular Yeah, but I do see there's a way to keep the multiplayer stuff like going very strong for a long time it, but it is I think it's a little bit on Nintendo I think early on it'll be really popular yeah. but if they don't give it any additional support mm -hmm. it, it will dwindle much like the solo will remain pretty stable but I think the multiplayer will die off much faster yeah yeah um, a fun one okay. um, because we did I did kind of allude to it um, this comes from Botox Games cool. on the style select screen 3D World is listed under extra game styles and includes a clear extra space next to it. Yeah. They mentioned how switching from any other style to 3D World erases all progress, essentially making it entirely unique. Do you think they could have another one hidden? Or maybe one that they'll add as free uh, as DLC, whether free or not. DLC later on. They'd love to see Yoshi's Island, personally. Mm. So oh. that, that blank space. Yeah, yeah. What what do you want and what do you think they're going to do with that? I mean, I think Yoshi's Island is a good pick yeah. because uh, <laughs> this whole thing with it, that gap being different, right, is that, like, you can't, like, mix things mm -hmm. up. And Yoshi's Island is a very Super different. Super distinct oh, yeah. art style. Uh, that would yeah. not, yeah. Well, yeah. not just the art style, the, but, like, a lot the of mechanics. eggs and everything. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like the uh, yeah. yeah, it would have to be its own thing for uh, sure. I would but, love that. But, like, dude. similarly, like, s there's so many different things that you could do with Galaxy, although I'm not sure if, like, you know, Galaxy would be too crazy. Um... Galaxy oh. would be limited in the same way they're limiting 3D, right. I guess, yeah. which would be It'd interesting. It would be sort of this uh, weird 2D-ish right. variant of a galaxy. Uh, I do think that Odyssey, you know, has a pretty good shot at it. Um, I, I think that there's enough, like, different, you know, additional, like, environments and things in there that could work. There's a lot of mechanics within those environments that could work. Um, and so, like, having yeah. the 2D Odyssey-themed levels, um, I really don't expect any kind of like Mario Mario Land 2 or anything like that. Um, I love the idea of Yoshi's Island, uh, but Damiani, you yeah. had a great idea. I don't think this was original. I know what you're going to say, but it wasn't my idea. Someone else on a earlier, okay. a, a older episode of Friend Code wrote it in when we were originally speculating about this. I think it would be fabulous. What is it? Paper Mario. Yes. Paper <laughs> Mario. Mario would be sick. Yeah, when we read that question, like whatever episode <laughs> it was, I think Kyle was with us. It was we're just like, oh yeah, yes, <laughs> so that good. Super that fun. absolutely would have to be its own rule set absolutely, for sure. Yeah, It'd um, be incredible. Like besides Odyssey, the most obvious one I think is Super Mario sixty four. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I I think they could add. Uh, there are certain things they could add to that. Um, that would keep it separate. Um, but but it would just be a two D. Version still though, right? Like wing, like uh, the 
Yeah, I guess. But I mean, like, yeah, like, if you keep it 2D, I guess that's different. That's um, what I don't. Yeah, I was trying to think of like 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 Wing Cap. Obviously, is flying Metal Mario, Invisible Mario mm-hmm. could be a thing. Mm-hmm. That they a lot do. of the power ups, yeah, I think yeah. would work good in a 2D setting. Is still like when I, wonder, I was saying with the like, cloud uh, suit from Galaxy, the cloud. Like suit I, I feel like because cool. it could be 3D as well. Like I mean, I guess I thought it was originally. I thought it was next to 3D uh, World because they. That one might work with that one as well. Like oh, the, yeah. And I would say Super Mario 64 could work because it could have like things rolling at you in the screen because mm-hmm. they do have like boulders. They have like the rolling platforms that like could roll in and out of the screen that or from like the desert stage inside the pyramid. There are these things that spin around it. You gotta like you'll get squashed by them if you don't jump over them. They could come <laughs> out of the background oh. into the foreground, or it could roll back and forth on the side like that, something like that. The poles. Yeah, um, like you could do something with that. Uh, it would be cool, but boy, it would be cruel also because you so just so want it to be a 3D <laughs> Mario Maker. Well, then you know, I, you I, just I kind of do wonder though if uh. is 64 simple enough that it could be. I think a, like it could be, tutorial, but, but it would, have, but to it would be, have to be its own game almost. Like so I don't think different. it would be yeah. a mode in this. Because I, I mean, I was dreaming of them making, since the first one I was hoping they would do like a 64 style 3D, which is like kind of low oh. res textures, but make it a 3D Mario Maker and simple in the same way 64 was. You, you know, you could design levels in there, but um, to do it as a 2D version with 3D backgrounds, kind of like how they're doing for 3D World, I don't know. Um. This was also written into us as a suggestion, and uh-huh. I think it would also, even though it's two D, it would have to probably be its own rule set because one, uh, just different aspects of the sizes of things. Uh, e- either Super Mario Land or Super Mario Land to six golden coins. Right, oh, you're yeah. saying like I, yeah, like someone, I, I would think that it would well, the Game Boy basically Game Boy style graphics. That'd be Game neat. Boy so likely. That'd be kind of neat. Land would be really That'd hard be a big to surprise. pull off, I think, because those. Like, they were very much in a transitional phase to where it still looked very much like a Game & Watch game. Yeah. Um, when I was capturing Game Boy games a couple months ago, it was just like the night and day of, of Land to Land 2. Uh, where it's like Land 3 was still looked a lot like Mario Land yeah. 2. Because I know you said you don't think they're going to do this. Yeah, but, I, I mean, mean, what would be weird is if um, potentially like Super Mario USA slash Mario Brothers 2... There's a whole other set of things yeah. there. I would honestly oh, love man. that, and I was thinking of that when I was watching this one. But Gotta the palettes, the I said, oh, man, I, I wish they had two, you know. Yeah. It's so fun to be able to design oh. with those assets and have those characters available. Uh, and then you get the, like, the, remember the, like, the subcon doors or yeah, whatever? Where you like yes. the oh, yeah, like the room. Oh, my gosh, yes. And, oh, dude, I love, I mean, to design with those assets would be super fun, man. I wonder if it could be a, a, a fun one, like All-Stars. Oh, yeah, I like thought it, it, all-stars, like it yeah. does like the All Stars palette for yeah. like all of them. Yeah. All Stars is cool. What was the second one for? Wait, uh, no, I think it was 3DS. It was a traditional one, but with it was something else. Coins. It was like New Super, uh, Mario, Brothers New Super Mario Brothers Two. Two. Yeah. It was right. a gold coin collecting one. That one. Mm. That was a really yeah. really fun one, but uh, it had like a slightly unique art style to it, but similar, I guess, to the others. But uh, maybe they'll do Mario's missing. <laughs> no, they Dude, won't. That's they, a neat that idea. one will definitely not be. It. Dude, <laughs> make an adventure game style. Dude, that'd be a neat idea. <laughs> that'd be really different. There you go. That's a that's an exclusive. Uh, uh, Mario is missing, or Mario teach Mario teaches Mario teaches typing. <laughs> you got a whole other uh, issue there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think honestly. Yoshi's Island or Paper Mario aesthetically would be like my most yeah, desirable choice. That would be incredible. Because yeah, sixty four would honestly, I'd, I'd want a three D Mario Maker at that point. Yeah, it's like, please it would be give cruel, me three D Mario Maker. You'd be looking at the background so, and saying, "Oh no!" Ouch. Just, yeah. But uh, yeah, Paper Mario would be incredible. But Yoshi's Island would really. I hadn't even considered that. That would be really sweet. Or our galaxy idea we were talking mm-hmm. about on the stream yeah. about being able to manipulate gravity in multiple points and yep. and how the gravity, how strong or weak the gravity is. And some um, of the power-ups yeah. in that, I think, would translate cool the same way the cat suit. You know, yeah. I mean, the uh, I think, like, you know, the cloud suit with the three clouds you could generate yeah. and stuff. I think you'd I think also would have to well. use a pointer. Or, or, I mean, you have to use motion because uh, you can have the little blue stars you could grapple to, oh, like, yeah. Yeah, to pull mm-hmm. you along. Sh- yeah, shake. Yeah, like, I think it would have to be a separate set. So it would also fit yeah. that it's a unique one that doesn't fit into any of the others as well. Dude, that'd be super cool. Yeah. 
All right, Don, I got two questions for you, not related to Mario Maker 2. Um, one of them is a Mario Maker question. Okay. The first one's from uh, Asbo. Basically, hey, allies, this will be my first time playing Mario Maker, mm-hmm. and I'm really looking forward to it. What advice would a seasoned pro like Don give me? <laughs> <laughs> the advice, one of the f- simplest advice I would give to anyone that's just getting into it is when you're first designing your level, try to make the goal of it be that it's fun and not hard. Because I think a mistake a lot of people try to do right when they first start designing is they immediately try to make really challenging things. Um, which when you're designing it can be fun because you're testing it so much that you know you get to be an expert at it but then other people it's not always that fun you know what i mean because if it's just a difficult level that's not really well designed it can feel just like a troll level you know what i mean often and whereas um if you're just trying to make it fun and not thinking of making it challenging at first then you can layer on challenging elements to it as you continue to design but you can also immediately get the satisfaction of sharing it with your friends even locally as you're designing it whatever the case may be so that you know um you can enjoy that aspect of the game because that's one of the funnest parts of the game is sharing it with people and, you know, getting their feedback and, like, you know. um, But a lot of times, if you're just trying to make it challenging right out of the gate, you end up with levels that... Because it's hard to make a a really well-designed challenging level, you know. But it's easy to make, like, a level that just feels like a troll thing, you know. like So, uh, yeah, so I would say when you're first designing, have keep in mind that it doesn't need to be too hard at first, uh, but you're trying to create elements within the level that are fun to do, you know, platforming that's fun, you know, just that makes you feel good. And um, and then you can make it more complicated as you go. I don't know. That's the initial advice mm. I would give to someone because a lot of times I notice that, that people just start making crazy crap, like tons, <laughs> of, tons of enemies are just weird, hard, hard jumps and this and that. And... Um, yeah. It's not always, you know, f- as fun to share with people then when it's like that. I feel like, yeah, that's good advice, Don. Because even if you, I feel like if you're even going to make a, try and attempt to make a hard level, mm-hmm. it still needs to be fun while also being hard. So learn right. how to make a yeah, fun exa- level yeah, and first. build up from there. Yeah. yeah. Really good advice. Yeah. I like that, Don. Cool. Uh, this last question from Rammer uh, is about a game series Don really loves. Ha- Howdy, allies. This question is for Don. Hmm. If you had the chance to revive the Wave Race franchise, (laughs) what would be some of your hopes and dreams for the game? Personally, I would love to see an open world racing adventure game with a story arc involving the original Wave Race announcer. Thoughts, (laughs) love and respect. Oh, that's great. Wave Race 64, an official nominee (laughs) to the EZA Hall of Greats. Man, <laughs> you know, I don't know if I have that many amazing original ideas for, like, what I do with Wave Race. There's a lot of things of just, like, the same thing, but, you know, obviously with this generation technology. But the one thing, uh, that open world idea he had actually is something similar to the uh, an idea I had a little while ago that was inspired by Blood playing, which was it, where you're cruising across the whole entire country? The crew, was oh, it? Oh, Crew 2? Yeah. yeah, Crew 2. Um, yeah, they've where, got some like, boats in there. They had like, you know, they could have a region that could spread from the Gulf of Mexico around through the Caribbean. Okay. Up around Florida, all the way up <laughs> okay. the um, you know, That's Atlantic. A big co- open world coast. There. <laughs> yeah, and it could maybe reach up to the, you know, uh, nor- northeast. And so it'd be huge. But yeah, it could be open, and all within there, you could have many challenges, many courses, and everything. But it's all just cruise. You know, you could cruise. You could find islands. You could find all kinds of stuff. So that was one idea that I think would open it up, um, or even just, you know, just like a chain of islands. You know, just like there's a section of the Bahamas, and yeah, like, yeah, they wouldn't have to make it. Yeah, that massive, right? Exactly. Even, oh, I mean, if they set it, yeah, in a chain of Caribbean islands, that would be beautiful, and you could cruise within them and enter races freely as you like, open world style and stuff. Uh, I like, I like this idea, Don. Uh-huh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna spitball off this. Good. I'm gonna, 
I'm going to add a little bit of crazy, a little bit of Nintendo element to this. Yes. So <laughs> you can pick, we'll pick a region of a fictional world where these islands, this, this, is, this open ocean exists with different like land masses, like tiny islands. Yeah. But we're going to go against like the traditional laws of physics and how weather and stuff works because you can s- s- ride over to any area, but one might be like, a storm area mm-hmm. where like the courses are going to be like rough waves, like thunderstorm, like heavy rains and stuff. Another one's going to be more of like a, an icy region where like you got to look out for glaciers in the ice and like we might be able they to go ice and oh, yeah. Uh, blue yeah. storm. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. I think they had ice in the first and it's yeah. too. Uh, okay. Th- yeah. But each, but it's not just a single course now. It's like a whole area and there's like multiple courses and like, you gotta like become like the champion of each of these areas and stuff. So like, yeah, go to like the t- tranquil tropical area, but you know maybe get to one that's like, uh, you know, it's more like inland area. So it's like the lake level. Yeah, yeah river. Like, go up a rivers, river. Rivers like, wa- like waterfall. Like a rapid. Dawn. Oh like, yeah, this, so It's like fantasy. It's like it's ridiculous. It never exists in real life, but that's what it is. It's all these fantastical looking environments. They start traditional looking normal, yeah. and they just get more and more crazy and stuff. And yeah, it's 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 about like those are like the cups. Like here's like the 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 thunder cup, which yeah. is like in the thunderstorm mm-hmm. area or whatever. And yeah, like you you meet different racers there. You can like that island. Like you could buy your upgrades and stuff. Like all that's there. But you can like drive or I guess race around or drive your wave runner around to different parts and see like oh I'm leaving this island now and now I'm going towards this like other one you could see the transition yeah and stuff like that you Dude. know maybe there's secrets in between you gotta like find you know maybe um, there's an underwater yeah, I mean, course see- maybe the dolphins come back <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I, I think the secrets are huge and that's like it's one of the, the like coolest things about Way very sixty four is just like how much there is to discover in all those different courses, particularly with the changing water levels and stuff. So yeah, I mean it would be great to to expand on that to kind of go like more in like a Beetle Adventure Racing kind of level of just you know different routes and secrets all over the place. And you know like I could imagine you know the water you know the tide lowers and then like yeah there's like a cave system there that you know you couldn't do on the first lap and it's a whole other you know, in to- totally different environment. What if it's like Black Flag, but with jet skis? Okay, <laughs> so you can just now you're describing water. You world, can just dude. Cruise, around <laughs> the water. cruise around the whole world. You can have your island where you can build your thing. You can explore temples, but it's all water based. You never get off your watercraft. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's have some boss battles too. <laughs> yeah, how would those work and stuff? Uh, Jet Moto, the old franchise. Oh though. yeah, remember that? Yeah. One? That kind of did some insane. It was like wave race, but yeah, it was Kyle, more like Kyle extreme. Kyle talked about that at length. Uh, yeah. yeah extreme uh, I think the thing that could help it is uh, also looking at a, a like looking at another series you really love Don Trials yeah like uh, having um because they always had like a separate score mode on top of like time, like the like place first and advance in the race. Here's also get a high score mode. I think they could like maybe fuse the two together, yeah, like by placing, but also like quick restarts, like checkpoints, like oh, go back to that checkpoint or just restart the like oh, the yeah, map uh-huh. really easily. And like you, it's not just about like placing first, it's about like oh. beating times as well to like you know, yeah, like, that's an interesting approach actually. Making yeah. it, yeah, super challenging to yeah. areas that you do have to just continually restart checkpoints and stuff instead of yeah just having it be a circuit with laps um that'd be really neat 2d wave race that could be interesting oh that they actually did it like 2d style like like that? like, like yeah. uh trials you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's what, maybe that's what trials needs to do for the next one like trial dude that's not a trials bad idea. riptide there you go give that me your title that is not a bad <laughs> idea trials riptide red links <laughs> red links you did send a check <laughs> Oh, man. That's a cool idea, actually. Yeah, level editor and that would be fun. But I think we all agree. We'd like to see Wave Race come back. Yes. Yes. Some yes, form. Yes, yes. Then even, if, even if they did, like, something a little bit more simple, um, like, like indie-style game that was, like, twenty nine 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 thirty nine ninety nine. Yeah. It wasn't a full-price game, just to bring it back. I mean, there have been quite a few really pretty decent like you know yeah uh, like wave racing the games riptide uh, yeah, series, riptide sure, series yeah. which are good but it's just like man they just none of them they've a lot of good ones even the 3ds what was the series of 3d wave racing and they also did a snowmobile one that was like almost the same but it was snow um, oh i don't know for sure but those were like pretty but fun which series was that i'm trying the you name just the slipped name. my oh, mind okay. it was for 3ds i think they had two wave racing sequels and then they did a snowmobile one which was really simple but it was, I mean, similar was but uh, uh, that's older. It was, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm surprised I forget it. that. 
it slipped my mind right now, but uh, it was yeah. a great game, but it's just so funny how something about the magic of that 64, the water even, still yeah. has not There's just quite something about been it done right. It feels so right. Yeah. You know, because it's like when I was a kid, like, you know, I, I grew up in Tampa Bay and my dad would always take us out on the waist in a boat that was too small to legitimately be taken out <laughs> in the bay. <laughs> yeah, so, the, you know, like I wasn't on jet skis a whole lot, but I do know like what it feels like to bounce around yeah. on those waves. And it's like, it was just so right and the subtlety too yeah the, and, the, the, and the stuff subtlety, like storms you know? kicking up and being yeah. able to like jump over yeah like, huge oh, things yes, and when the, the waves picked up Just higher and play up that element again yeah you know, like that's and they so never good. felt like, even though there were patterns you could identify, it never felt like you were just going through like a canned animation. Like it was always dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. It, no two times felt the same for me, even going over like the same path. It was like there's something right, slightly right, right, a little different. Yeah. Like I, I just turned just as much again. And it was like, well, the wave, like I hit the wave at this angle. So like it counted for that. I was like, well, yeah. there you go. It's not, yeah. It felt really good. I mean, Looking back on it now, visually, it's like looks a little chaotic. The water, mm -hmm. I mean, it looks so amazing back in the day, but yeah. now it's like uh, okay, mm -hmm. that hasn't the, the look of it hasn't aged the greatest, but like the physics of it are still so incredible. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blue Storm looked yes. really even now it holds up fairly well. You know, it yeah. looks pretty good for a GameCube game. It looks good, but um, even that it didn't quite have like yeah. the same yeah. Uh, feeling of like just that. it was like a for me, I don't know if this is the most best description of it but it felt like a, a, a on water version of 1080 uh, mm. avalanche essentially oh, yeah. like, huh. they felt like these are both made by the same team NST and it felt like it went more for that uh that extreme sport angle, yeah, and that kind of like phys the physics were more akin to like how it felt like snowboarding in that game because 1080. N64 and Avalanche don't feel the same either. Right, yeah. They're a little off. And Wave Race 64 to Wave Race Blue Storm, it was, yeah, it was like it lost a lot of uh, the, the the nuances of the, the physics in it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they were going for, it was that weird time where, like, the early 2000s where they're going for, like, this, uh, even, like, the art style of everything in there looked, mm -hmm. uh, like, the, the two games had, like, similar art styles and everything. It was yeah. just... Uh, it was it was nice to see them come back, but they clearly were both lacking something that the original. I felt the originals uh, made them stand out more. Yeah. Essentially, they had really good evolution, a evolution in Blue Storm. You know, and it was a lot more yeah spectacular, mm -hmm. like set piece type stuff would happen, yeah. and they had cool yeah, weather me, effects and all kinds of stuff. Uh, maybe I should go back. Alternate and do paths. It. I mean, there were a lot of good things, but it was just like. I, it never quite had that same perfect. I thought to me the main issue with Blue Storm wasn't that it like felt that different, but it it, it actually felt like they were. It was almost like an HD remaster kind of approach. Uh, you know, it was like a uh, yeah, lot yeah. of the like the same environments that they had just kind of like made look better for the GameCube, and so it sort of sort of felt like you were just you know playing a remix version of it yeah. mm. i think i would yeah i feel like i want to replay it too because yeah. this two is, is pretty I spectacular I, I don't think i've touched it in maybe a, i played it a ton when it came out yeah i don't think i've touched it in this decade it's pretty <laughs> cool like you honest. get like alternate paths and you get like yeah. really cool weather effects and like There's i said really spectacular level, stuff yeah. with big giant waves and like but um, it is a good game. It's not a bad game but uh, by any means. But, uh, yeah, we're long overdue, baby. We're long overdue for Wave Race. <laughs> I can't explain it why we haven't had one other than, uh, I don't know, maybe just the genre. Uh, they don't expect to sell good, and you want to do a I game think, like that with a yeah. decent budget. Definitely, it's so. definitely a, an issue where any, I think any kind of, you know, traditional racing game like that that's just, like, track-based, like, Mario Kart 8 is one of like the exceptions, you know, like most of the time the 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 amount of detail you want out of those tracks people just look at a number of tracks and yeah. they're like, "Oh, that's not worth $60." I'm like, "Okay." Right, yeah. So, mm -hmm. like maybe yeah, maybe Don they need to like combine like maybe they make a like a something called like Nintendo Extreme Sports or something which has like Wave Race in there and oh. 1080, and it's like you pick yeah. some of the popular characters. Well, from they had the wave racing in uh, what was it resort? Wii Sports Resort. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm getting. Right. It was like, like the game. It wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't what little, you wanted it to yeah. be. But that was a great but, idea. But like they're worried that like these games can't justify it on their own. That's 60 a great bucks. Idea. Yeah. Put them together. You know, yeah. like you choose your mode or whatever. Mm, it's like sure. uh, I'm forgetting all their characters' names now. But you know, put them together and stuff, and like they can go into like the. 
you know, they can go do wave race. They can do. Just, yeah. I'm trying to think of a third thing to throw in there that might make it like even more appealing. But at the very least, put you know, wave race and 1080 together again. Yeah, not again. The, but I mean, the sp- put them together so we can play them again. The Wii Sports concept, if it wasn't necessarily tied to like motion controls, but if that concept of just having an island where you have wings. various, yeah, it's real like, pilot wings. Yeah, you have, no, <laughs> not, not fake pilot wings. You have pilot wings. Yes. You have pilot wings, pilot you have wave wings. race, you have It's uh, called 1080. Nintendo Extreme Sports. <laughs> it's a and, good like, idea, There man. you go. It's like hang gliding again. And yeah, like, dude. Like, yeah, it's skydiving. There you there yeah, we go. Dude. Like, yeah. wave racing and that snow. That would be sweet. Yes. That would scratch the itch right there. It's going to be announced fine. at E3. I feel it. Yes. <laughs> that Caribbean blue switch that I've been <laughs> <laughs> wanting for three years now. Every year it's my prediction. It hasn't come. Uh, and I'll get the ice we'll blue. Yeah. <laughs> or you could co-op. You have one person hang gliding and the other person oh, water skiing. Dude. <laughs> well, yeah. Or jet yeah. skiing. We got to figure out how to make it a battle royale, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just like 50 people playing extreme sports yeah, on the like same island. The tra- and that's, you're just That's the trailer. Like you're doing like you're skydiving and then like you like land on like the jet ski and then like you go off like a waterfall and like it gets cold yeah. and freezing you on the snowboard. And like the, the, <laughs> oh, dude, the, twist, that'd be the cool. twist at the end is like you fall off like an edge. And it's like, oh, no, did they die? The rocket pack. Is oh, oh like, yes, burr. dude. <laughs> Yeah, that would be sweet. It just cuts the black like, there. Dude, like, there that would we go. be sweet. That would be super fun. Yeah, and they'd kind of like hedge their bets a little, you oh. know, don't have to rely on the water racing niche. <laughs> oh. uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to cut it there. We can we talk a long time about games we'd like to see come back. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, that that's good stuff. Oh. Um, I'm glad I got you got a chance to theorize about Thank another you. wave race. Thank yeah. you for those questions. Yes, definitely. Thank you. Um, but yes, thank you. Uh, thank you for everyone who submitted your questions in general. Um, I know it was a little weird thing. They had to wait for us to catch up and everything like that. I couldn't read the questions until after we watched it. So, uh, that was a fun thing. I was like, yeah, I can actually check the questions. They're all going to be spoilers potentially. Um, but also for being patient to wait to write your questions until you'd seen it as well. And if you would like to submit questions for a future episode of Friend Code, uh, you need to be a $5 patron. Uh, the week that we will be recording, I will make a post uh, calling for submissions. I'll also let you know the topics that we're talking about. Um, and the the if you keep your questions related to the topic, it's more likely I will pick them for us to discuss. So again, thank you for all that. Also, if you're a $5 and up patron, uh, you get this episode of Friend Code and episodes of several of our other shows. Sorry, I'm like slipping up here. If we get, you get early access to a bunch of our shows if you're a $5 patron, including this show. Uh, this one, actually, we're going to try and get up as soon as possible uh, because it's right after a direct and it was big news. But traditionally, they go up on Sundays uh, for patrons and Tuesdays for everybody else. So again, thank you for those of you who support us that way. Um, thank you, Bloodworth, for joining me. And yeah. sp- so much thanks to you, I Don. Did yes, Don did a oh! podcast. I'm I so happy. Yeah, that was, see, it was like almost two hours, Don. Oh, my God. Did you like that? <laughs> Didn't think it was possible. I didn't think it was possible. Once you get on a wave race tirade, you know, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <It's a wave laughs> race. go all night. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Damian. Oh, it was uh, fun, man. This was really fun. Yeah, it was a pleasure. I, I was like, didn't even know we could talk about Mario Maker for that long. Yeah, it's like, that was cool. Good to know that uh, when you bring uh, someone passionate and yeah. very knowledgeable like Don on cool. that, it could it can go that well that was fun but yeah thank you both for joining me this late and uh until next time everybody may the way of the hero lead to a new wave race oh. <laughs> <laughs>